action lawsuit for one of his programs that gives grants to black small business owners. Hello Alice co-founder Elizabeth Gore says that since the lawsuit, the small business community has rallied around her platform. We've had hundreds of thousands of letters of support, emails, people coming out. We're based in Houston, Texas, and we've got our vets coming out in support of African Americans. We have women coming out in support of men. The small business community, particularly after COVID, has really galvanized. They're growing. Now, capital's tight right now. I will give everyone that. But they're really a savvy community that they have to have each other. If you look at Main Street, all those shops are working together. Gore says the legal headache so far has turned out to be galvanizing for the firm. I'm Bloomberg's Justin Milliner on the Black Business Beat. Whether you own a local business or a global one, you know that these days, generating growth is a challenge. By teaming with Bank of America, you'll not just stay ahead of the curve, you'll move it. With access to experts, award-winning insights, and business solutions so powerful, you'll make every move matter, locally and globally. Visit bankofamerica.com slash bankingforbusiness to learn more. What would you like the power to do? Copyright 2024, Bank of America N.A. I'm Tiffany, founder of Harlem Pilates. When I couldn't find Pilates in my neighborhood, I started a studio from my studio apartment. Chase Inc. helped me grow from one Pilates studio to three. Because when you start small, you're going to need some big help. With the Chase Inc. Business Cash Card, you can earn up to 5% cash back on business essentials, so your business can go from here to possible. Chase for business. Make more with yours. Real business owner compensated for their participation. Cards issued by J.P. Morgan Chase Bank, N.A. member FDIC, subject to credit approval. Terms apply. The views and opinions expressed on this program do not necessarily reflect that of the staff and management of Good Karma Brands, but are the sole responsibility of the hosts and guests of this particular show. America may have many, many days, but they will be full of trouble. There will be no rest. There will be no tranquility in this country until a nation comes to turn with our problem. Bringing you social and political commentary from his mouth to your ears. Breaking down the issues which matter to you. You are not put here to be a white man's footstool. You are put here to represent the very best in God's world. Legendary civil rights icon, the Reverend Jesse Jackson in the studio. Reverend Jackson, how are you? Mr. Reverend, good morning on this chilly Milwaukee morning. And I am pleased to have one of the founding members of the Black Panther Party, Chairman Bobby Seal. Mr. Chairman, how are you this morning? Good morning. I'm doing just fine. Thank you. From Mr. Eric Holder. Mr. Holder, so good to see you. How are you? Well, I'm fine, man. How you been? It's been a long time. Haven't seen you for a while. The Dr. Cornell West. Dr. West, how are you, sir? My dear brother, you're so kind, you're so generous. So, man, but I salute you and the work that you were doing there. You're doing a magnificent job there, West Wisconsin. Stream live on 1017thetruth.com. Call in with your questions or comments. 833-212-1017. Join us on social media at 1017thetruth. It may not be what you expect to hear, but I will definitely give you what you need to know. Are you ready for the truth? I want the truth you can't handle the truth now live from the american family insurance studio at the avenue in the heart of downtown milwaukee here is sherwin hughes good morning welcome to the program today is monday april 15th 2024 i have long been critical of affirmative action programs and this thing that you guys call it's like a like a supplement to affirmative action is the new program is the diversity, the equity, the inclusion. And did you know they added another letter? They added a B. So it's D E I B and the B is belonging. They just keep adding letters, which I suppose makes sense as the country gets more diverse and we recognize individual marginalized groups because they intersect with the American experiment differently. Like if you are neurodivergent, the kinds of discrimination you face may be different than someone who is not born in America. Or if you are an African American black person, you know, we face all sorts of discrimination too. But the way we interact and intersect with discrimination is different than that of, let's say, a Caucasian woman with blonde hair. 
who may be discriminated against in her own right, but it will be different than another group. So we want to have a sense of belonging amongst all of these people. It's got a really fascinating history, and I found out who the individual that's responsible for coining the term DEI. I thought it was new. It actually was coined back in 1989, and it's had an unusual evolution. I think that we interpret it now as we want a diverse workforce that is free from discrimination so everybody can work together to make the CEO rich. So we just want to bring in, you got to bring in, you got to have some gays. Bring in gays, got to have some blacks, a Latino and Hispanic. Need some biracial people. What else you need? Need somebody who's differently abled, someone who's neurodivergent. And you have this kaleidoscope of America, right? But what is the point of doing that if it's just for show? So if I was the CEO of a very large company, called what's the name of my company sherwinicus exports i don't know what we export but that's the name of my company leave me alone i want a gay well not just a gay i want some gays i want some blacks probably heavy on the blacks like when you go to burger king and you order a whopper with extra pickles on extra blacks some Latinos, I need an Asian, got to have, there's so many different kinds of Asians. I would have a very diverse workforce, but I would never operate under the expectation that all of the people that are from quote unquote marginalized groups, I'm using air quotes, I could not expect them to get along. And I think with the original thought and the incarnation of diversity, equity, inclusion, and B for belonging, if you bring all these people together, whether it be at a, on a college campus or in a workplace, that they're all going to get along because they all have a similar story of discrimination or their histories have been wrought with discrimination and prejudice and all sorts of other things, right? Not true. I think when you bring a whole bunch of minorities together and people that are marginalized, whether it be at Sherwinicus Exports, or a college campus or some some corporate office environment, they begin to one up each other. Like, oh yeah, I bet I'm more oppressed than you. Oh yeah, prove it. Well, I'm a woman. Well, I'm a black woman. Well, I'm a black woman in a wheelchair who's a military veteran. Well, I'm deaf. And they'll just keep going on and on and on. And I don't know if they get along, but I'm not sure if that's the point. If I was a corporate CEO of Sherwinicus Exports, I want all of the people. Got to have some whites. Got to have my token whites. Got to. They're going to start at the bottom, though. They're going to be interning. Start at the, <laughs> they got to earn. Oh, look at that. Got a ding. Oh. Ricky, you all right back there? You good? Okay, you can handle it. I got it. Okay. I got it. I won't ask you again. All right. So I got my whites. Heavy on the blacks. Um, the Crown Act is in full effect. Black women can wear their hair. However they want, I might have 17 black women that work for Sherwinius Exports. And they may all look different on Wednesday because they'll all have different hair. That's wonderful. They add to the diversity. Asians have some Indians. I need some Aleutian Islanders. Even if I have to go to the Aleutian Islands and just get me one, just hold them hostage, put them in cap captivity. But the only reason why I want that kind of diversity is not so I can show off how diverse my staff is. I want to make money. Diversity, equity, inclusion, and belonging is only as good as the perspectives that those different people are bringing to my business, my company, my corporation to help me make money. If I got Latinos and Hispanics and whites and blacks and so many different varieties of Asians, then I want them to be able to speak the language of their people so they can effectively market to their people, to their affinity group, and bring them over to me as customers. That's the only reason why I want it. When you have a company that has many whites, they begin to have a skewed perception as to what minorities actually want, crave, and desire. So what happens is you just get a bunch of stereotypes. 
you guys have seen the stereotypes. They really play out in television. If it's a domestic product or a cleaning product or dishwashing liquid, it's always a woman that's in the kitchen. But here's another nuance you need to pay attention to. Whenever it's something about the home or the house or about domestic duties or cleaning, any kind of a product or a service, there's always a woman front and center. Maybe there's kids running around. But it's stereotypical, especially when you have a whole bunch of men, usually Caucasian, deciding, oh, this is what women will respond to. They'll respond to other women who are in the kitchen. Sometimes you'll have women of color in those commercials selling this product or this service, this domestic cleaning product and or service to America. But notice something. Whenever you see a commercial with a black woman in it, it depends on what the product is. Look at her left hand. Tell me if you see a wedding ring. I know it's a very nuanced thing to look at, but psychologically it means a lot. Because we get so used to seeing black women who are unmarried, when they put black women in the commercial, they don't even use a prop wedding ring. Now, juxtapose that to when you see a Caucasian woman in a commercial. She, whether she's married in real life or not, She's always wearing a wedding ring. And so it's those little nuanced things that we want to try and get rid of because they're horrible, they're wrong, and they're stereotypical when you have diverse people working for your company, your corporation, your marketing department, et cetera, et cetera. I have been critical of all these programs, and I'm going to tell you why. I'm not going to tell you why yet. You're going to have to continue to listen to figure out my logic as to why I am critical of diversity, equity, inclusion, and B for belonging, and the affirmative action programs that we have seen throughout history. And there's a, there's a common thread amongst all of them, which make them, in my book, not credible and non-starter. So I'm going to take a break. When I come back, I'm going to give you guys a very interesting and rather detailed history of affirmative action programs in this country. And I think within that history, you will see from the onset why they were never supposed to work. Affirmative action was never really supposed to work. It's like, um, it's like a symbol. It's symbolic. Like, hey, we have black people that are struggling to get jobs and they're being discriminated against. Let's take some affirmative action to make sure that they're not discriminated against. But what is the affirmative action, though? So we're going to talk about it. Don't worry about it. And also, mark your calendars for Thursday, April 18th. There is a school board meeting where members of the board are looking to censure or discipline, possibly remove Aisha Carr from the school board. Now, I recently talked to Director Carr to ask her why she may be disciplined or removed from her elected position by her colleagues. And the only thing that we can deduct is this, because they haven't told her why they're trying to discipline her. Here's the thing we voted for. So people that didn't vote for her are trying to discipline her. It's because she was honest about the referendum. Y'all remember when Aisha Carr came here? Of course you remember that because all y'all watched the YouTube video. That YouTube video got as many views, damn near, as when I interviewed Marjorie Taylor Greene. And Marjorie Taylor Greene is nuts. She looked good in her blue dress, though. Sorry. What do you want me to say? So a lot of people saw the uh, YouTube broadcast when I had Aisha Carr, our school board director, in the studio talking about why she as a board member opposed the referendum. Well, because the board is mostly controlled by the teachers union who do not care about your kids. They only care about how much money your kids can bring. Just like diversity, equity, inclusion, and belonging is not about having a diverse, equitable, and inclusive and belonging atmosphere. It's about making money. And because Aisha Carr was very forthcoming with some of the financial mismanagement that she knows and she's familiar with, as she is a single board member on a board of how many is it? Eight of them, nine of them however many it is, they want to potentially remove her from the school board. So what we're going to do on Thursday, I'm going to get you the details and the times in a little while. I think it starts at 530. We're going to flood the NPS school board meeting. It's going to be so many black people. It's going to look like the Amistad. We're going to flood it because they think we ain't going to show up. We're going to show up. Right now, I'm going to take a break. 
But you stay where you're at. I'm going to come back and talk about the detailed history of affirmative action. You're listening to The Truth with Sherwin Hughes on 1017. I'll be right back. More of The Truth with Sherwin Hughes is next on 1017 The Truth, The Truth app, and 1017thetruth.com. Tune in to Truth in the Afternoon with Dr. Ken Harris on Wednesday, May 1st, as he will be broadcasting live from the Boys and Girls Club of Greater Milwaukee's College Signing Day, presented by Direct Supply. He'll speak with students from the Boys and Girls Club of Greater Milwaukee about their journey through high school to college, their career aspirations, and the over a million dollars in scholarships they have earned to attend college. The Truth's coverage of the Boys and Girls Club of Greater Milwaukee's College Signing Day is sponsored by the University of Wisconsin-Milwaukee. The Empowerment Small Business Loan Program, we're talking about up to $5 million, which for small business owners, we need that. That's like payroll, that's resources. So can you just let us know what is the program and why is this lending program so important to Old National Bank? Years ago, our uh, CEO, Jim Ryan, this program is his brainchild. He was working with Roland Shelton, who yes. you know, Denise out of Evansville, and they identified that African-American business owners, uh, Hispanic business owners, Native American business owners, as well as women business owners had a difficult time in obtaining financing from the traditional credit partners. And so we went out, created a program, launched it last year in 2023. And so far last year, we have helped over 100 successful minority and women-owned businesses with about $25 million in loans. We've already started wow. this year with almost $8 million in approvals, again, geared toward minority business owners and women business owners that normally had difficulties in, in obtaining a traditional credit finance. Protect your dream home with American Family Insurance. And you can weather any storm. You'll also save up to 25% by bundling home, auto, and life. American Family Insurance. Get a quote. Find an agent at AmFam.com. Products not available in every state. Discounts may not apply to all coverages on an auto or home policy. Discounts do not apply to life insurance policies. Visit AmFam.com to learn how discounts may apply to you. American Family Mutual Insurance Company, S.I. and its operating companies, American Family Life Insurance Company, 6000 American Parkway, Madison, Wisconsin. Gain skills to lead community-based organizations and develop creative solutions for social change with a bachelor's degree in community engagement and education from the University of Wisconsin-Milwaukee. Created in collaboration with the community, this program provides a home for students and Interested in social justice. Learn alongside diverse students and supportive faculty. The program can be completed fully online and you can earn credit for professional experience. Learn more by going to uwm.edu slash c-e-e-d. Injured? Call Gruber Law Offices today. One call, that's all. Literally one call, that's all. I made one call and I, I, that's all, worry-free. One call, that's all. It worked. Just one call and that's all. They will do what they say they're going to do. One call and that's all. One call, that's all means security. It's literally one call, that's all. It's a phrase we'll never forget. Gruber Law Offices. One call, that's all. It's the truth with Sherwin Hughes on 1017 The Truth, The Truth app, and 1017thetruth.com. Shout out to all the diversity hires, because some of you are. It doesn't mean you're not good at your job. It's just, let's just call it what it is. I think I've been a diversity hire before. I'm sure I have, right? Or maybe I've just been hired at every job I ever had because I was good. Nah, that can't be it because some jobs I sucked at and got hired anyway. Well, here's the thing. Let me just, let me put this out here before y'all completely turn your backs on D-E-I-B, diversity, equity, inclusion, and belonging. I don't know if there's any corporation in America that can teach people how to belong. They try, though. When you cast a wide net, because after George Floyd, a lot of companies were like, oh, we don't have nearly enough black people here. What have we done or what have we not been doing enough of to attract more black talent? Because white people felt real sorry for black people for like six months. They held the door open for us, didn't they? Gave us discounts on our little coffee, did all sorts of things. And then, you know, 
the Black Lives Matter yard signs came down. They went back to their default setting, which, you know, it happens. Every so often something real bad will happen to a black person publicly, and then white people will feel sorry for just a little while. It's like they, like, oh, snap. Our rhetoric actually turned into action. This black man got killed by the police. Let's march. Just for a little while. Let's not march for a very long time. Let's just let them know that we're not really like that white person that killed that black person. We hate black people in a much more subtle way. So they'll get out there and they'll march. But then we'll do something where they take it all back, all the sympathy that they have for us. Like they'll see something really, really bad. Like, I don't know, Rodney King is an example. And then we'll get an OJ. And they'll be like, see, you Negroes, we <laughs> we tried to. We tried to help you, but you killed two of ours. But if you're a diversity hire and you're good, then congratulations. Because hopefully in a company that discovered they were not very diverse and they decided that they wanted more diversity so they could use that as a selling point. Hey, look at our company. Buy from us. We've got a gay and a black and several varieties of Asians. We have many different flavors of Latinos come and spend your money with us because we're very diverse and we take diversity very seriously. A lot of times people get an opportunity they otherwise would not have gotten. If it was just business as usual and businesses, companies and corporations were just looking at traditional ways of maximizing their profitability with very intelligent, highly educated white fellas, then that's what they would do, right? Why would they rock the boat? If their shareholders are happy and they're profitable and the CEO is making a whole bunch of money, why would you need to disrupt the apple cart? Things are working just fine. But every now and again, they decide that they want to broaden their hiring or at least create positions where they can get underrepresented people in the door. And what happens, lo and behold, that is where you discover a new kind of talent I firmly believe, without having to, like, coin it or make it codified into law, the kind of talent that diverse people bring is very unique. Here's an example. Just look at culturally what we bring to the workforce. You guys ever been to a potluck? I don't do potlucks anymore because since the advent of social media, I see what some of your kitchens look like. I don't care how delicious your casserole is. Margaret, your cat walks around on the counter. Have y'all ever seen that? You've seen it. Many producers in the producer gal. Now, I don't want to disturb y'all. Y'all in there relaxing. I just, would you eat at someone's house that had their cat? You ever go to the house and their cat just is at home on the kitchen table on the counter? Cat is just walking around and the cat's ass is in the air and the tail is up and it's just cat walking around. I can't. And then you can't say anything about it because cat people are seriously mentally disturbed. I don't want to. Ah, here we go. If cat people didn't have cats, I think they'd be violent criminals. The only thing stopping most cat people, and not a person that has, like, a cat that, like, saved their life or something. You know how sometimes people just find an animal? They're not even really animal people, but they were, like, homeless and naked, and a cat came and brought them a coat. Like, there's some compelling story about how this cat entered their life, and they're not really a cat person. They just like their cat. Almost like people that don't like kids but only like their kid, which is common. Most people don't like your children. Is that news to any of you? Including your children's teachers. A lot of times they don't really like kids that much. But not a tra- like a traditional cat person. They're weird, especially people that have like several cats. They, in a different set of circumstances, will be murderers. Just saying. Hope I didn't offend any of the cat people. Are any of you cat people? Alex, you look like there might be a cat at your house. I don't, I don't like cats. Okay. I'm a, I'm a cane corso type of guy. I like big dogs. No diddy. Those dogs. Okay. <laughs> Those dogs eat people. 
A Kane Corso. It's a jack. You can put a saddle on that dog. And, and a Kango dog too. What's a Kango dog? It's just about just as big as a Kango Corso. I like real big dogs. No, no, like paws. So not a cat person. You're no. Just, do you have a dog? I did have a dog. Uh oh. I had a bull terrier. Well, what happened to it? I gave it away because I moved. You ain't supposed to give the dog away because you're moving. supposed to keep the dog unless I, the place you moved to couldn't have pets. I couldn't have dogs. Okay. Well, I'm sorry. Plus, it was a one bedroom, so it wasn't even big enough to have a dog. Well, did you give the dog to someone where you could still have visitation? Yeah, for a while. Then after a while, it's, you know, out of sight, out of mind. Okay, fair enough. Guess you're not much of a dog person either. Just get rid of your dog and then don't think about it. Anymore. I wouldn't say that. All right. Enough about cat people. Let's talk about affirmative action, shall we? 1961, President John F. Kennedy's executive order 10925 used affirmative action for the first time by instructing federal contractors to, and I quote, take affirmative action to ensure that applicants are treated equally without regard to race, color, religion, sex, or national origin, establish the committee on the Equal Employment Opportunity, or the EEOC. So it wasn't even a law. It was just an executive order penned by John F. Kennedy, March 6, 1961. Then in 1964, the Civil Rights Act was signed into law. This was landmark legislation prohibiting. So we finally get a law codifying affirmative action into something with teeth, and if you violate it, there's actual criminal penalties. If you violate an executive order, the president just says, hey, don't do that. Tisk, 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 shame on you. But when you actually have a bill, a piece of legislation that is passed in both houses of Congress and then signed by the president, now you can have actual enforcement. This was landmark legislation prohibiting employment discrimination by large employers, over 15 employees. Wait a minute, I didn't know that. So if your company, business, or source of employment had less than 15 employees, you still could discriminate? The Civil Rights Act of 1964 was signed into law. This was landmark legislation prohibiting employment discrimination by large employers, over 15 employees, whether or not they have government contracts, established the Equal Employment Opportunity Commission, the EEOC. In 1965, President Lyndon Baines Johnson ex issued his own executive order, 11246, requiring all government contractors and subcontractors to take affirmative action to expand job opportunities for minorities, Establish the Office of Federal Contract Compliance in the Department of Labor to administer the order. 1966, the EEOC promulgates regulations that require employers with at least 100 employees or government contractors with 50 employees to fill out the EEO-1 private sector report annually. This report is a snapshot of how many racial and ethnic minorities and women are working in a company. So I don't know if they still do this. It's been a long time since I applied for a job. I just get them. I also lose them too, but I usually just get a job. Sometimes as a part of the application, they'll have you fill out the demographic survey and they always say it's optional. Are you, you know, what minority or what racial group are you, you know, white, Latino, Hispanic, Asian, whatever the case may be, then they may ask you some other demographically identifying information. That is because those companies contingent upon their size have got to submit that every year to the federal government. And so what it does is it attempts to measure how many applicants of color or protected class or minority status are applying for these jobs. You'll also see in job announcements Women and minorities encouraged to apply. Like they'll have it at the bottom of the job announcement at the posting. It'll usually be in italics because they want to show that they are at least looking for and trying to interview and speak with. Not necessarily hire. You can skirt affirmative action by saying, hey, we interviewed 700 black people. Unfortunately, all of them were so horrible, we couldn't hire any of them. So you can't sue us for being discriminatory because these are the number of black people that we interviewed because we said in the job posting, my women and minorities strongly encouraged to 
apply. And we did outreach in black community newspapers and in black radio, et cetera, et cetera. That does not mean that they have to hire black people. They just don't want to be accused of being discriminatory when you find out they didn't even interview any black people. 1967, President Johnson amended Executive Order 11246 to include affirmative action for, uh uh-oh, women. Federal contractors are now required to make good faith efforts to expand employment opportunities for women and minorities. Whenever you leave it up to a company, a business, a contractor, or a corporation to make a good faith effort to hire minorities, you know what what, what a good faith effort is a lot of times? Hey, let's go down to the local KFC and see if we can get us a black to apply. And they go to the KFC, and there's no blacks there getting any chicken. That's because they should have been at Popeye's. No, we tried. That was our good faith effort. In 1970, the Labor Department under President Richard Milhouse Nixon issued order number four authorizing flexible goals and timetables to correct, quote, underutilization of minorities by federal contractors. So I'm going to take a break there, come back, give you guys a few more interesting, detailed, historical tidbits about affirmative action. But while, like, all of the things that have been done since its inception in 1961 – It doesn't work. It doesn't work. You can't make a law or an executive order requiring someone or encouraging someone's good faith effort to have a much more diverse, equitable, and inclusive workforce that also includes belonging. These things are doomed to fail from the beginning for a central reason, which I'll discuss in a little while. You're listening to The Truth with Sherwin Hughes on 1017 FM. Don't go anywhere. I'll be right back. More of The Truth with Sherwin Hughes is next on 1017 The Truth, The Truth app, and 1017thetruth.com. Hey, Milwaukee, my name is Martina, and I'm with the Independent Living Supports Pilot Program team. We help adults 55 plus and those 18 plus living with disabilities, providing up to $7,200 for home services, medical equipment, home modifications, and more. There's less than 30 days left to sign up for this program. See if you qualify today. Call 414-289-6874. Again, that's 414-289-6874. This program is made possible by Milwaukee County and Wisconsin Department of Health and Human Services. Ever feel stuck in a mental maze, endlessly spiraling? Sometimes an encouraging reminder helps. Be Sad, Keep Going is a mental health and wellness brand by Marina Miranda Creative that reminds you it's okay to feel sad as long as you keep moving forward. By embracing your emotions, you're not just improving your health, but rewriting the narrative for generations to come. Join the movement today and claim 10% off their range of apparel using code KEEPGOING10. That's KEEPGOING10 when you visit marinamirandacreative.com. Be Sad, Keep Going is dedicated to improving mental health by reminding you of your resilience. It's time for Truth Takes, a thought-provoking commentary on the new 1017 The Truth. Here is Denise Thomas with her truth. Truth Nation, there has been an ongoing debate in terms of what work ethic means, and primarily across generations. You hear phrases like, this new generation doesn't know the meaning of work. They're entitled. And the younger generation saying things like, the older people... They work way too hard and not smart enough. All perspectives have some extension of validity. I want to share with you something that I heard last weekend that really resonated with me as it relates to work ethic. And the quote was, a lot of people want to learn how to play the guitar, but they don't want to take the lessons. And so Truth Nation, as we continue to have ongoing conversations about the meaning of work, and work ethic. I want to ask each of us to consider what work means to us and in terms of what we are looking to gain from whatever aspect of work that we deliver every day, is it equal to what we want to gain? In other words, are you putting in the work that's not just short game or 60 seconds or less, but the work that is going to create a long impact on whatever return on the investment looks like for you. Let's start having more conversations about the meaning of work, making sure that we're aligned on what that looks and feels like, and ultimately not giving up on doing the work. Because goodness knows, we got a lot of work to do. 
This has been Truth Takes on the new 1017 The Truth. Listen to The Truth Be Told with DT and Telly weekdays from 7 a.m. to 9 a.m. This Associated Bank Sports Update on 1017 The Truth, powered by ESPN Milwaukee. I'm Alex Telez. After the New York Knicks win and losing to the Orlando Magic 113 to 88 Sunday afternoon, the Milwaukee Bucks have locked in the three seed in the Eastern Conference. They are set to take on the six seed Indiana Pacers for round one of the NBA playoffs. Game one is set for Sunday, April 21st, with a time still to be determined. The Brewers lost their first matchup versus their former Cy Young pitcher Corbin Burns in the Baltimore Orioles Sunday afternoon in Baltimore by a final score of 6-4. They come back home and are set to take on the San Diego Padres this Monday night. First pitch is scheduled for 640 with coverage over on WTMJ beginning at 605. This sports update brought to you by Associated Bank, proudly supporting your hometown team's member, FDIC. This is The Truth with Sherwin Hughes on 1017 The Truth, The Truth app, and 1017thetruth.com. Had to put the Versace's on them. Y'all ain't never ready for me. Let's read some of these comments, shall we? Oh, Peanut Gallery, what say you? Um, not really. A city girl says, good morning, good morning. Bless says, good morning. Gerardo says, buenos dias. Babs, which is Barbara, says, good morning. Zuri says, Zuri, if you don't know, she is one of our very loyal and faithful, I guess, listeners slash viewers. She's also very hot in the pants. She also she, she says a lot of sexually inappropriate things. Ladies, I know what it's like. I know what it's like to be objectified for your body. Sha boing boing boing. <laughs> it's terrible. That's why when I leave the house, I gotta be all covered up. Cause one of these hot in the pants women might get a little handsy. All right, um, Gerardo says, girl, Gerardo, don't say that. Don't ever start a sentence out with G-U-R-R-R-R-L-L-L-L. Sherwin is laying the foundation for what he wants to talk about today, but we know he's going to be derailed by callers. No, I'm not. I'm staying on task today. I want to let you guys know and illustrate to you why the whole idea, the concepts of affirmative action, diversity, equity, inclusion, and belonging, they don't work. It doesn't mean that there can't be good things within them, but on their face, they're destined to fail. But I think they were created as lip service. Because, you know, black people have always been, like, annoyed and agitated with how unfair America is because we say all people are created equal except for you, 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 her, they, them. And so we get very frustrated because it often has an economic impact because if there are narrow negative stereotypes that exist about black people, then those negative stereotypes may permeate into the workforce and an employer might say, yeah, we don't want the lazy blacks to work here. And we're not lazy. Black people work very hard. We do. We do all sorts of difficult tasks every day. Okay. What else we got here? Vanessa says, just say no to cats. I met Vanessa. Vanessa, is this, are you the Vanessa I met on Friday night? I was outside Friday night. I was in the streets. A friend of mine owns a little, little lounge, a little, little music venue. Not as go there, just a little kickback. I, I got my little table. I sit there. I mind my own business. But when I go there, I always see people that I know. Like, hey, so-and-so, hey, Sherwin, hey. I just say hi to people, and I just get left alone. I just do my thing, kick it with Evan for a little while. And then I saw, I met Vanessa. Very nice to meet Vanessa. And Vanessa was with a lady. So it was Vanessa and a lady and me. And then we took some pictures. Then a random white dude just showed up. And he just, he just, as we're taking pictures, a random white dude, he just, he stood behind me, right? 
And he just kind of put his chin on my shoulder. I didn't know him. I was like, oh, he must know Vanessa and her friend. Because I think Vanessa and her friend, they were out somewhere else earlier in the evening. And they came to the little, to the spot that I hang out at. And there's a white fellow. And he's just, you know, moseying. And then all of a sudden we're taking pictures. He gets in the picture and he stands behind me. And I look at, the, at Vanessa and Vanessa's friend. I was like, oh, th- who is your friend? Because he just put his chin on my shoulder while we took a picture. They were like, we don't know him. So if you look in one of the pictures on my Facebook, it's a white fella who's uncomfortably close to me. And I figured he knew them. In fact, where I was standing I was taking up, like, there was a bar stool that I was leaning over. So I figured, oh, I must be leaning over his seat. And so he's just going to be a good sport and get in the picture. And then once we're done taking pictures, I'm going to go back to my neutral corner. They're going to go back to doing what they were doing. He's going to sit down. So after we got done taking the pictures and he lifts his chin off my shoulder, he just kept walking. (laughs) That was my Friday night. What else we got here? Um, Creation Muse says big dogs, male big dogs, might take your wife slash girlfriend. Can't have nothing running around my house swinging but me. Did I go too far? Yep. Yes, you did. If you are concerned that you may lose your wife or girlfriend to a canine, you got other problems to worry about, buddy. There you go. All right. Not really a city girl said Sherwin is looking good. That head is shining. See, that's why I wear a hat in here. Because the studio lights are very bright. When I try to turn the studio lights down, they get mad at me. All right, let's see what we got on the other text messages. Let's not forget what we're talking about this morning, okay? We're talking about why affirmative action and the diversity and the equity and the inclusion, they don't work. They are fundamentally flawed. They are flawed from the beginning. For a very simple reason, I want you guys to think about why you think these programs from their inception are flawed. They were like ideas, right? Kennedy was probably sitting around getting serviced by Marilyn Monroe in the Oval Office. We got to do something for the blacks. The blacks need something. We need to make sure that the blacks are able to get jobs in the federal faster, Marilyn. Because you know Marilyn and John F. Kennedy. I think both Bobby Kennedy and John F. Kennedy had a thing with Marilyn Monroe. Swallowed up. Have you ever been swallowed up? That's right. That's fine. Everybody knows. And everybody knew it. Listen, I know some of you may disagree, but if you're president of the United States... Come on. You're president of the United States. You have the fate of the world in your hands. Your policies, your Supreme Court and federal court and appellate court and circuit court judge selections can change the course, scope, political and social and cultural landscape of this country and of the, of the world forever. That's a lot of pressure. Sometimes... You got to release that pressure. You know what I mean? So it's not even that big of a deal. The Kennedys and Marilyn Monroe, that's fine. Dion said, Sherwin, you didn't invite me out. I sure didn't. I sure did not. Uh-uh. Dion said, it's a couple that were charged for having sexy with a great Dane. Thanks, Dion. Wayne says, sure, when American cat people are equivalent to Indonesians that have pet monkeys. I I personally think a monkey is cooler than a cat, but I'd hate to see what the north side would be like if a bunch of stray monkeys running around. Boy, there's some racist stereotypes. I can say with that one. Millicent said, animals in the house is nasty. Miss Nikki says, good morning, Sherwin. Good morning, Miss Nikki. Yes, we are going to flood the school board meeting. Let's go. So, you know what? I have it pulled up. Hold on. I can't. This text is small. 530, okay, on Thursday. 
On 52nd and Valide Central offices, they're having a school board meeting where they're going to try and discipline Aisha Carr because they're trying to say that she violated board rules and board policies by publicly discussing with people in this city, you know, homeowners and taxpayers and renters, that the school board referendum was not a good idea. So now they're trying to punish her and discipline her. So what we're going to do on Thursday, April 18th, is we're going to go to the school board meeting and say, hey, slow down, whites. She's ours, and she was doing us a service by letting the public and the community know what really goes on behind the scenes with the school board and the meetings and all of the money. So let's, let's, let's have a lot of black people. Bring your pet monkeys. Bring everybody. Bring your cousins and your nephew. Bring them all. We're going to go to the school board meeting on Thursday. Looking forward to seeing you all there at 530. Right now, I'm going to take a little break. The truth for sure when Hughes will be right back. Seven The Truth, The Truth app, and 1017thetruth.com. Truth Nation, it's your boy Ben Jamming. And your girl Noni Juice. Y'all know what time it is. It's time to get Jamming with Juice. The hottest brand new show in town. Jamming with Juice. Real conversations, juicy interviews, and a whole lot of fun. From trending topics to what's happening on the streets, we got you. Sip on Jamming with Juice every Thursday at 6 p.m. where we're always keeping it juicy. It's amazing. Catch Catch Jamming Jamming with with Juice Juice exclusively on on YouTube. YouTube. This is your Planned Parenthood Advocates of Wisconsin Minute. Social injustices have created a long-standing list of disparities in education access and the quality of education. Injustice is also seen in sexuality education provided to students. Students really need the full spectrum of what it means to have the information so that they can take care of themselves. Reproductive justice leaders advocate for schools to provide comprehensive sexuality education, which helps students to prevent unintended pregnancies and obviously increase their chances of graduating. It's really important for the listeners to remember that even if you don't have students in MPS, even if you're not a parent, those students are part of our community and they deserve our support. The more that they receive, the better off they are, the better off our community is. This has been your Planned Parenthood Advocates of Wisconsin Minute on the new 1017 The Truth. Life's better with American Family Insurance because our home policies help protect your dreams and come with peace of mind. Save up to 25% by bundling home, auto, and life. American Family Insurance. Get a quote, find an agent at amfam.com. Products not available in every state. Discounts may not apply to all coverages on an auto or home policy. Discounts do not apply to life insurance policies. Visit AmFem.com to learn how discounts may apply to you. American Family Mutual Insurance Company, S.I. and its operating companies, American Family Life Insurance Company, 6000 American Parkway, Madison, Wisconsin. Associated Bank knows your small business isn't just a venture. It's your dream and a vital part of the community. And we're not just a bank. We're your neighbors. We're looking out for you. That's why Associated Bank offers quick online applications and approvals with funding in as fast as one business day, checking with no minimum balances or maintenance fees, and prompt customer service. Explore our products at associatedbank.com business or visit a branch for more details. Subject to credit approval. Member FDIC. Equal housing lender. Riverside Theater on April 26th will be the place to be. The One World Music Festival is coming to Milwaukee, and it will feature great local artists that you don't want to miss. Performances by Chicken P, 414 Big Frank, and many more. There will also be special tributes to honor artists of the past, like the great Cuckoo Cow, Baby Drew, and Ray Nitty. April 26th, get your tickets today by visiting pastheatergroup.com and search One World Music Festival. It's The Truth with Sherwin Hughes on 1017 The Truth, The Truth app, and 1017thetruth.com. Barbara says she doesn't know about JFK. He was so sick and in pain. Makes me wonder if he really was such a ladies' man, question mark, question mark. He had severe back pain all the time. Yeah, he did have back pain, but we're talking about his front. His front was probably just fine. And it's well documented that John Fitzgerald Kennedy was very active with the ladies. That's how it was back then. Well, I would argue that's how it is right now, too. 
But I don't think Barack cheated on Michelle while he was president. Oh, Barack cheated. Come on. Don't be ridiculous. Of course he did. And here's the thing. Michelle probably found out about it. In fact, I'm sure she found out about it. But Michelle was like, you know what? I'm finna stick with dude because he's going to be president and I'm going to be a black first lady. Think about had Michelle Obama left Barack the first time he cheated. We wouldn't even know who she is. She would just be a black lady in Chicago doing stuff with other black ladies in Chicago. There's a bunch of black ladies in Chicago, probably a couple hundred thousand of them. We wouldn't know who she is. So just stay for the cheat and then look like, okay, Hillary Clinton. Had Hillary Clinton, and I hate to have to say this, I really do, and it pains me to have to say this, but I think you all know it's true, especially if we are being honest, and I'm, I want women to be especially honest because women did not vote for Hillary Clinton in the numbers that African Americans voted for Barack Obama. That's documented fact. You can go ward by ward, county by county, city by city, township by township. Women were not overwhelmingly supportive of Hillary. White liberal women are or were. But what are they, 20% of the voters, if that? Had Hillary Clinton divorced Bill, and she was running for president in 2016 as a single, formerly married woman, I don't think she would have raised the money. I don't think that her campaign would have had the strength that it had. She tolerated the cheat. She Look what happened to her after she tolerated the cheat. Her career actually probably did better for her staying. And I hate to have to admit that. And, and maybe there's other factors that are involved. But Washington, D.C. politics is a very unusual animal. I had the luxury or maybe the unfortunate privilege of working in Washington, D.C. for a short period of time. It's too much for me. It's too much. It's too transactional. It's too cutthroat. It's way too fast-paced. So Hillary Clinton survived the cheat. She then gets elected senator of New York, then secretary of state under Barack Obama, then Democratic nominee of her party in 2016. Do you think that she would have achieved those things had she left Bill Clinton? I hate to admit this, too, but Bill Clinton's network of donors and fundraisers probably assisted Hillary Clinton. Not that Hillary Clinton can't raise money in her own right because she can. But when you combine the fundraising prowess of Bill Clinton with what Hillary Clinton can do, there you create the first woman nominee of a major party, and that's something to be proud of. But I'm sure that Bill's fundraising network, you got to keep this in mind about Bill Clinton. You know how we talk about Donald Trump being impeached? Actually, Trump was impeached twice. Bill Clinton was impeached too. I don't know if y'all even remember that because it to the party faithful, it doesn't matter. Because Bill Clinton, even after you know his situation with Monica Lewinsky, he still was the rock star of the Democratic Party. Bill Clinton is still very, very popular. He's just getting old. But in the years that followed him leaving office, he would tour the country. He would bring out huge crowds for, I remember when Kerry Edwards, when they were the Democratic ticket in 2004, Bill Clinton would show up at a rally for them and 50,000 people would show up, even though Bill Clinton was involved in some extracurricular proclivities he still was a rock star and he was impeached in fact his impeachment had to deal had to do with his proclivities let's talk to scott you know, 1017 the truth turn your radio no, no, down this is scott the this, this is the caller oh sorry didn't say that this is the caller yeah this is the caller all right um, the caller now, uh, as far as the Clintons, uh, they kind of rose into prominence uh, 
simultaneously, uh, as far as we know, and her family was very rich. He was poor. So she created him. Uh, so as far as finances and connections, the connections that he had came through her dad. So uh, you being a prominent man, would you tell your daughter to marry some broke dude and then when he uh, puts her at risk? Because anybody like uh, Monica Lewinsky who would hold semen to spit it on a dress might have some STD. So I wouldn't tell any of my children to stay for a cheat hoping to be uh, more famous. Because basically what you said is these two women became more famous. Michelle Obama was a Harvard uh, law student who graduated with honors, I believe. So these are two women who aren't good examples of what you're saying. You, to accept the type of abuse that you're talking about would be people who uh, don't have their own accolades and their own, you know, that education that we hear you talk about, you know, that's so valuable. You uh, think it's abuse? It's very valuable. So what what I'm saying, uh, yeah, uh, have you ever seen genitals that have herpes? That's what goes along with cheating many times. So my question well, is, we got off base here. Would you, would you advise your children to take that risk to become a candidate for the wife of a president? And I'll hang up and let you answer. Okay. Well, that that sure was a lot. So here's the thing: you don't think that Hillary Clinton and Michelle Obama were faithful either, right? The men just got caught. You know, early we were talking about cats, and cat people are different. So let's relegate a man to a dog and a woman to a cat. Everybody has seen dogs having sex. Everybody's seen dogs humping inanimate objects, humping somebody's leg. Have you ever seen a cat have sex? Of course you haven't, but they do. They just do it in secret. The Truth was Sherwin Hughes will be back for hour two. What's good, y'all? This is 1017 The Truth's Telly Hughes, and I am Milwaukee. The goal of Truth Be Told with DT and Telly is to provide a platform for citizens of Milwaukee and Truth Nation to have their voices heard about concerns that have daily direct impact. So join the home of Milwaukee's realest conversations where you can speak your truth. We are the award-winning 1017 The Truth, Milwaukee Black Talk. Truth Nation, it is Denise Thomas from Truth Be Told with DT and Telly, and I am so excited for you to tune in to our monthly interview with Old National Bank. Old National Bank will be joining us to discuss why they are so committed to supporting women and people of color-owned businesses while also discussing their empowerment loan program, which can provide your business access to funds up to $5 million. So don't miss our Truth Be Told monthly interview with Old National Bank at 8 a.m., on the award-winning 1017 The Truth. One smile is great, but one smile in a community of smiles is so much better. A smile has a secret power that most people don't know about. A smile multiplies. It spreads from one person to the next, stretching across entire groups of people. Smile Train knows this and is proud to be creating a wave of smiles across the cleft lip and palate community in over 70 countries. Patients, doctors, advocates, fundraisers. Collectively, our smiles are a celebration of the transformed lives of over 1.5 million children. Learn how Smile Train is helping the cleft lip and palate community at smiletrain.org slash learn. Smile Train, changing the world one smile at a time. Hey, Wisconsin, it's construction season, and the Wisconsin DOT wants to help you safely navigate work zones in your area. Check 511wi.gov or download the free 511 app to see current road work, closures, detours, and camera views on your route. Wherever your travels take you, know before you go with 511wi.gov. That's 511wi.gov. And remember, know before you go. Always park the phone while driving. Sponsored by the Wisconsin DOT. At the YMCA, finding your why starts by making an impact together, touching lives for the better. It can be the gift of time or treasure, supporting a community through talent without measure. Here, compassion fuels commitment, finding fulfillment through enrichment, serving and improving. What a way to live and what a gift it is to give. Find your why and get involved today at ymca.org. 
for a better us. Truth Nation, stand up and tap in. This is 1017 FM, 1510 AM, WGKB Waukesha, and W269DL Milwaukee, a locally owned Good Karma brand station. This is The Truth with Sherwin Hughes on 1017 The Truth, The Truth app, and 1017thetruth.com. Welcome to Hour 2 of The Truth with Sherwin Hughes. We're talking about why I think that affirmative action programs and how they have been interpreted and reinterpreted and in some cases completely overturned and made illegal or unconstitutional or like what we did here in Wisconsin. We had our University of Wisconsin system have a number of ideas and programs that seek to diversify the offerings for students because, you know, first-generation students that are of minority background, when they go into the world of a college campus, it's very foreign to them. If no one in their family has been to a four-year college or university, the culture you are stepping into is one that is very difficult to relate to, especially if you don't have other family members that could have, as best they could, prepare you for what you're about to see and deal with, et cetera, et cetera. And so it was made a requirement for the UW system to end, divest, and ax all diversity, equity, and inclusion programs, including those that sought to diversify faculty in order for them to get uh, frozen pay raises and additional resources they need for their budget. So affirmative action is now like political cannon fodder. And if there's a conservative that is running for office, they may use affirmative action against the Democrat and by saying, hey, they want all of these non-citizens and all of these illegals to come and take your jobs in your community because of their affirmative action. It's very easy to demonize. While I believe the intentions on the onset may have been good, like, hey, America's not being fair to black people. And in the 1970s, they included women in affirmative action hey, America's not being fair to women. Let's take affirmative action to make sure that they can get a fair shake at the American dream. They're not discriminated against based upon X, Y, Z, A, B, and C variables. I'm going to get into diversity, equity, and inclusion in a minute. That one's a little bit more complicated. And at least diversity, equity, and inclusion, the term was coined by a black woman. She's a critical race theorist by the name of Kimberly Crenshaw. And she is involved with the intersectionality as a feminist, and she includes that in her sociological theory. And she came up with the term in 1989. That was a long time ago. Because we weren't really talking about DEI, and now they added the B. The B means belonging back in the 80s. No, we were not. But Kimberly Crenshaw was fairly recently, in the last probably 10 years, probably less than that, Diversity, equity, and inclusion is now a part of overall corporate American jargon. But at least this one has a little more credibility. DEI has more credibility than affirmative action. Here's why affirmative action was always destined to fail, because it was created by white men. White men are ill-equipped and inept at creating a program that looks at diversity. Because they will never create a program where the diversity outshadows them. So it's always going to have limits. Or you do it in a piecemeal fashion, or you roll it out not with a bill, not with a law, not with an ordinance, but with an executive order that is easily defeated by an act of Congress. So even when you create these good faith affirmative action programs and policies, at the center of them is the sentiment of a Caucasian man. And even if you there's a good white fella, a nice one who's not racist at all, he doesn't want black people and brown people and women and Asians to overtake his position in society. Why would someone do that? Why would you create a program that could foster your extinction in the business and corporate world? When you look at all of the the marginalization, the discrimination, the racism, the oppression, if you look at all of those things, 
what is the most profound impact they can have other than taking someone's life and shortening someone's life and maybe having an impact on the care that they may receive? It's economic. It's money. Those groups, more often than not, have economic challenges because of the perception of who they are based on their national origin, their sexual orientation, their race, et cetera, et cetera. They are less likely to get hired. And if they are hired, they're going to occupy lower rungs in that company, that firm, and that business. So all of the discrimination that we do has got major economic consequences. And it's easy to discriminate against black people because of the way we look. You know who, who it's hard to discriminate against? The Jews. Because you don't know, right? You don't know. I don't know why I'm whispering all of a sudden. Well, you got to be careful because they, they're sensitive. But black people are sensitive too, though. Just saying. Let me go back to what the town was saying. Then he asked, you know, if I would recommend my child marry someone who was a cheater or a philanderer. First and foremost, parents, you got to understand, you have zero impact and influence on who your kids marry. So for him to even ask me that was ridiculous and disingenuous. If anything, that's overstepping your bounds as a parent. Your kids are going to fall in love with who they're going to fall in love with. You can give your opinion or you also can say, oh, I denounce you marrying him or her or they or them. You can do that. But ultimately... It is your child's decision who they are going to marry. Now, you hope that you raise them in a way in which they would be able to spot certain things in individuals that they are dating and involved with and considering marrying. But you can't tell your kids who to marry. Think about this. Some of y'all that are married, your parents hate your spouse. They always have. You married them anyway. I mean, you probably got divorced, but we marry who we want to marry and there shouldn't be any influence from anybody else because it's usually the people that don't know how to be in a relationship or they're really bad at relationships that give the best relationship advice. <laughs> I'm talking about myself. You can't even take marriage advice from someone who's been married for 30 or 40 years. You think you can get relationship and marriage advice from someone who's been married 30, 40, or 50 years. We know how hard marriage is because let's say there's someone who is speaking to a crowd on whatever the subject matter is, and that person who is speaking to this crowd of people starts off by saying, I want to thank my lovely spouse. We've been married for 35 years. They are met with applause because people are like, damn, 35 years. Oh, my God, that's... How'd you do that? And you would believe that someone who has been married that long has got very good relationship advice. No, they don't. The only advice they can give you. Let's take somebody who's been married for 50 years. What year was 50 years ago? 1964. Right? 74. Oh, my God. I just, I just realized how old I am. 1974, 50 years ago, right? A lot has changed in the last 50 years. That person who got married to their spouse in 1974 can only give you advice on how they stayed married to that person. Someone who's been married for 50 years only has advice on how they can stay married to their spouse, not how you can stay married to yours. Because I assure you, whoever it is that they married is very different than the person that you are married to. So their advice, other than just the basic stuff, don't go to bed mad. Don't cheat. Don't spend all your spouse's money on ice cream and cocaine. You're right? It's real basic kinds of things. But the, the caller also referenced cheating as abuse. Where both people in a relationship assuming a heterosexual cisgender marriage can be unfaithful each has their reasons for de- doing so so if a woman is unfaithful to her husband and they are they're just very good at it 
the reasons why she or he may cheat is the abuse, not the cheating itself. Something led to it. There was a dynamic there was a, that was created. There was a mismatch power dynamic. Something happened where one person thought, or maybe both of them thought it was necessary for them to step out to seek comfort and refuge elsewhere. I don't call that abusive. That's human nature. Whether you like it or not, and I know you guys don't want to hear this, human beings by no means were created biologically, anthropologically to be monogamous. If that was the case, then one man and one woman could only procreate with each other. All of their faculties of being attracted to other people would be shut off. And that's not the case. That is not the case at all. Now, because we have big brains and we're intelligent, or at least when men use our big brain, we can make choices and make decisions that can keep us committed to one person. We have that ability. But we also have the ability to seek gratification. It doesn't even have to be sex. Because there's a whole bunch of things that fits into the definition of cheating. But here's the other thing about it. Most couples tolerate it. And going back to what the caller said, do you guys have any appreciation for what people will do and what they will tolerate for power? Do you have any idea what a woman will deal with and put up with and tolerate for a lifetime to have the opportunity to get the money, to get the fame, to get the notoriety? Do you have any idea? Because when you think about it, being with someone who is not going to advance you at all, they're normal, they're regular, they're boring, they work a nine-to-five job, they make $50,000 a year, but oh boy, are they faithful. But your life is going to be hovering around five out of ten, which is better than three out of ten, it's better than one out of ten, but it's not eight out of ten, it's not nine out of ten, it's not ten out of ten. There are some people that get a ten out of ten lifestyle that it's got to tolerate a partner that's unfaithful. The things, you guys know what people will do to get money. And if the money that they want, that they seek, that they feel they deserve has to come through the pocket of their spouse or their lover, what they will tolerate to continue the money flowing. And it doesn't shock any of you. I don't know why all of a sudden we become purists. We think about, no, and the people are going to be faithful. And Bill Clinton shouldn't have cheated on Hillary Clinton. You, you know what? Maybe not. Maybe he shouldn't have. But he did, and it wasn't his first time. Bill Clinton had a whole bunch of women that came out the woodwork. But we've had this discussion before. If there is a man who exudes power, he is attractive to women. Women don't want weak and powerless men. They can pretend that they do, but those are the men that get cheated on. Ask a weak and powerless man how many times he's been played. All, every girlfriend he's ever had has left him for somebody else. A man who was more powerful, had more status, had a better reputation, was a better singer, was a better dancer, made more money, had a nicer car, whatever the case may be. And then they're going to try and play meek and say, no, we're not shallow. Any human being that goes to such incredible lengths, including surgery to augment how they look, is shallow. And I'm not even throwing shade. That's just... We're all shallow to some extent. I just don't like when people that are fundamentally flawed in pretty much everything we do cast negative dispersions on people that do exactly what we do. They just happen to have gotten caught, and you just didn't get caught yet. But the lengths that someone will go to and go through, Hillary Clinton, I'm sure, could have divorced or never married Bill Clinton in the first place because he's probably always been who he was since they was in college. And she was like, nah, I'm going to take my, take my chances on, dude. I think he may be taking me places. And I am not saying that that is the only reason why they got together, but they saw a power dynamic in one another. And power couples are a very real thing. And so a lot of folks who are not familiar with the dynamic of a power couple, there's power couples that have whole other lives. Like they're with their spouse. They do public appearances with their spouse. They go to different events. They, they're huge, you know, charitable contributors to all these different charities, whatever. 
but then they have their own separate lives outside of the public view. And I think if, if a lot of you knew what some of these dynamics were of these power couples, you, you'd be heartbroken because you think, oh, they're faithful to each other. And, oh, they love each other. And, oh, they're all about one another. No, they do all that stuff for y'all. So they give the appearance. Hollywood relationships are the best example. Oh, wow, look at this couple. Look at Will and Jada. Jada did most of the cheating. Still is, probably. I mean, Will, maybe, I don't know if Will cheated. But Jada, didn't she admit it? She was with the dude. Ricky, you know about Will and Jada. Jada, she humped the guy named August Alcina, Alfina, Al, him. And she he also uh, supposedly was best friends with Tupac Shakur. Oh, yeah, we know that. You know, Tupac ain't just going to have female friends that he's just hanging out with. And then the daughter said that she misses, was her name Willow Smith, right? Yes. That she was uh, sad and that she wished Tupac was still alive to talk to her mother. Yeah, that's unfortunate. Damn, Will Smith. And Will Smith is not a slouch, right? He's a, a man that I'm sure a lot of women would like to be with because he's a powerful man. He's a great actor. He's a wonderful actor, and everybody loved the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. You know they got bad boys coming out. Uh, they sure actually. do. Was it this? No, it's this year. It's yeah, this, this summer. This summer. Yeah. Martin is in it. We all love Martin, too. Will Smith is so powerful. He slapped Chris Rock. Okay. Wasn't even asked to leave the Oscars and then won an award. That's powerful. Damn. So you got to think about that for a second. That was assault and battery that he committed on live national television, right? Facts. Slaps Chris Rock, goes back to his seat. Keep my wife's name out of your mouth, sir. And it said it was constant. He would not win that trial. No, God, no. <laughs> and Jada's over there just laughing. So really, she might have been the powerful one. Did you did you actually see that though? It was like it was very cringy. Yeah, I saw it. It was very cringy. I saw it live. I thought it was a part of the act. Just because of the way Like she sat there very uncomfortable. Well, she laughed. Yeah. Because they flashed yeah. to her. Yeah. All right, we, let's we gotta take a break. This is how we get derailed. I'm over here talking about affirmative action, and then we got talking to powerful men. So okay, let me say this and I'm gonna take a break. Women like powerful men. And she, the woman who Let's say she gets a powerful man, however she defines it. Could be rich, could be famous, um, could be a man of great reputation, who's well-loved, well-liked by the country, by the community, by the city, whatever, whatever. She knows that there are other women that want him to. And again, I get in trouble when I speak on behalf of all women, but there's a large number of women that want the man that every woman wants. Few women want the man that no one wants. Men need to be vetted. They need to be vetted through attractive women, through powerful women, through smart women, beautiful women. If a woman vets a man, we're like, hey, this one is okay, he's with me, that man is instantaneously more attractive. That is why, fellas, if you walk into a bar, a lounge, a nightclub, a restaurant, a damn Walgreens with an attractive woman, you instantaneously become more attractive to other women because they're going to have this innate curiosity. Damn, what is it about him that he got her? I mean, women tend to be incredibly judgmental when it comes to looks because imagine this, you're with a woman, right? Then you're, you're unfaithful to her or you go and you get another girlfriend or you marry somebody else and the person that you are married to now. So you had a woman that was beautiful. She was like, who's, who's pretty? Holly Berry, right? Real pretty or whatever. Beyonce pretty. Jay-Z even cheated on Beyonce. That's crazy, right? I mean, looks ain't got nothing to do with it. And then you wonder why he cheats on a woman that's, or he marries his second wife, whatever, is unattractive. It has nothing to do with the looks. A lot of people think, oh, if a woman is really attractive, she won't get cheated on. She's going to be the first one to get cheated on. Because she may believe that she does not have to tend to other parts of the relationship because she has pretty privilege. 
But that's the first thing that a woman will say, like, oh, he divorced me or cheated on me for that ugly girl. Tell me that's not their default setting. Whenever a woman gets cheated on, she always chastises the woman that her husband or boyfriend cheated on her with by saying that she is ugly. That's just the craziest thing ever to me. All right, we're going to talk about diversity, equity, and inclusion and belonging on the other side. You're listening to The Truth with Sherwin when he was on 1017 FM. Don't go anywhere. I'll be right back. More of The Truth with Sherwin Hughes is next on 1017 The Truth, The Truth app, and 1017thetruth.com. The baseball season is finally here, and we want to celebrate the Milwaukee Brewers with you, Truth Nation. We are excited to announce our Take Me Out to the Ball Game giveaway. From now through the end of April, we will be giving away tickets to cheer on the Brewers live from American Family Field. For your chance to win a pair of tickets to a game, you must download the 1017 The Truth app and be on the lookout for our weekly Brewers push notification. Play ball with the truth and go watch the Brew Crew by downloading the 1017 The Truth app today. For contest rules, visit 1017thetruth.com. This is Community Heartbeat, presented by Outreach Community Health Centers on 1017 The Truth. There are individuals in our community who certainly need health services, a variety of health services. What if they do not have health insurance? How can you serve that population? Our community health center allows patients to come to our clinic, regardless of their ability to pay, and that's part of our federal funding. You can come to our clinic and be seen based on what we call a poverty level. So anyone 200% or below a poverty level can be seen in our clinic clinic for anywhere from $20 to $40 for that visit. So in other words, if your visit is a $400 visit and you fall on our sliding scale where you pay $20 for your visit, you would not be responsible for the $400. You'd only be responsible for $20 for that visit. Also, our pharmacy prescriptions are very, very affordable as well. Where you would normally pay, let's say for an inhaler, $240 a month for an inhaler, at our facility that would cost you about $4 or $5. It's very good to know you guys have a sliding scale that makes it very, very affordable. We Energies want you to keep this important safety message in mind. Before you start digging, planting, or landscaping on your property, call 811 to have underground utilities marked. Calling 811 at least three business days before you plan to dig will help you know what's below and can prevent a hazardous situation. Our representatives will mark the underground utilities on your property for free. So remember, stay safe and call before you dig. We Energies. People you can trust. Energy you can depend on. Happy Financial Literacy Month from Educators Credit Union. If you're dreaming of financial freedom, new ways to pay down debt, or tips to invest in your future, Educators Credit Union can help. They offer budgeting tools, personal finance courses, and debt solutions to turn your financial dreams into reality. Learn more at ecu.com. That is ecu.com. Membership at Educators Credit Union is open to anyone who lives or works in southeastern Wisconsin, and they are federally insured by NCUA. Protect your dream home with American Family Insurance. And you can weather any storm. You'll also save up to 25% by bundling home, auto, and life. American Family Insurance. Get a quote. Find an agent at AmFam.com. Products not available in every state. Discounts may not apply to all coverages on an auto or home policy. Discounts do not apply to life insurance policies. Visit AmFam.com to learn how discounts may apply to you. American Family Mutual Insurance Company, S.I. and its operating companies, American Family Life Insurance Company, 6000 American Parkway, Madison, Wisconsin. It's the truth with Sherwin Hughes on 1017 The Truth, The Truth app, and 1017thetruth.com. Barbara brings up a very good point. And I agree with her. I agree we should turn the music down. That's what we should do. There we go. Turn it down. Yeah, we got to turn it down. Turn it down. There you go. All right. Barbara says what people who are married for a long time can do is give advice on what not to do during a marriage. I agree. This is just my perspective, though. And y'all got to keep in mind, when I'm sharing my perspective, this I'm not speaking for all of y'all. Sherwin is speaking from his corner of the universe, dealing with the people that I've dealt with in my life, which I will admit is very diverse. I've dealt with many different types and kinds of people. So I've got a wide-ranging perspective. And I see y'all over here talking about, oh, Sherwin is speaking on behalf of all women. You know what I found? Women lie to one another. And tell men the truth. 
Women will lie to their girlfriends. Women will lie to their mamas. Women will lie to their sisters, but will tell their man and be honest with their man about how much they hate their girlfriends, their mamas, and their sisters. It's the craziest thing ever. So us as men, we get the unfiltered truth. But of the people that I have met that have been married, some of them multiple times, some of them keep trying to get married and they keep getting divorced, keep trying, keep getting divorced. The most consistent advice I have ever heard from someone who was married, even if they've only been married once and they're still married, you know what the best advice that they give is? Don't get married. When you get bombarded with that, then it makes it really, really tough. Because now I'm going counter and contrary to all of the best advice from the people that I've looked up to my entire life. If this was 1943 Kentucky, then I would encourage and be very supportive of that black man and that black woman getting married because they needed each other. They needed to look out for one another. They needed to protect one another. And they very much, very desperately needed two incomes. It was for their survival and for their own protection that they got married and stayed married. Especially if a woman was not covered by and protected by affirmative action policies, the jobs that she would even be offered were so limited and the pay was so incredibly low. It was to her financial benefit to marry a man because at least he had more high paying job opportunities open for him. Now that women can and do out exceed men in pretty much every measurable economic category, women have more education. Women have, you know, can make tremendous amounts of money. They're CEOs, they're entrepreneurs. Now it's not at the level that it should be because we do still live in a patriarchy. A woman does not need to marry a man for money. She can marry him for status. She can marry him for reputation or my opinion, the only reason to get married. There's only one. You can make up a bunch of reasons. There's only one reason to get married. You only get married for love. That's it. Everything else is ancillary. Everything else you can get from friends and family. You marry for love. Now, if you're lucky, you have someone who's got a good reputation, a lot of earning potential. They've got a great, uh, you know, future ahead of them or whatever the case may be. Maybe you two can combine and be something fantastic or you want to have children, but you marry for love. Because who you marry, especially if you have kids, the marriage and the unity of that marriage is more important than the kids. Kids should never be the priorities. If that man and that woman cannot be together and resolve their differences, the kids are going to suffer tremendously. So the relationship between the two in the the relationship of the couple supersedes that of the children. You know, people will say stuff like, oh, my kids come first. No, they shouldn't. No, they shouldn't. If you don't put yourself first, if you can't take care of you, if you're like struggling and suffering, your kids are going to be screwed up. You can't put your kids first. Like the kids can be a close second. I got to I put my kids first. Your kids don't put you first. In fact, your kids can't wait to put you in a nursing home and they're not going to visit you. They're going to stop loving you. All right. Looks like we have Ken on line one. Is that who that is? Let's talk to Ken. Hello, Ken. Hey, good morning. Good morning. Hey, I was just hey. calling. I was just calling. Hey, I was just calling to comment about uh, marriage. Um, I've been married for over seventeen years, oh. and uh, she's she's my best friend. Um, it's a constant. It's see, people have this conception that you meet somebody, you fall in love, and live happily ever after because you're married and blah blah blah. But the reality is, it, marriage takes work every single day. Every it's 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 a partnership. It's a businessship. It's way bigger than just I love you. Like love don't pay bills. Nope. Um, it it, it helps. It it definitely helps. But then you look at today's society, we. We have so many options now compared to back in our fathers and mothers and grandparents' time. So 
the institution of marriage, uh, I think, has changed or evolved, but because of tradition and religion and everything else in the world, uh, it, it's suffering. Marriage is it's not being it's not being updated. It's not with the times. The expectations are are just so jaded, you know. So that's just my opinion. Like I said, I've been married a long time and, and we're making it work and it's a constant thing that you gotta tune up. You gotta constantly retighten those bolts. Thank Ken, you. Knowing what yes, you sir. know now after seventeen years of marriage, if you can go back seventeen years, let's hope she's not listening right now. Would you do it again? Uh uh-huh. Yes. Okay. I would I would definitely do it again. I would do it differently because we met the circumstances we met under was was more business side, but it was definitely love there because we were together for about five or six years before we ever got married. But we did get married um thinking about the benefits, the the things that we needed in our lives uh at the time is what steered us towards the whole institution of marriage, if that makes sense. Oh, it does make total sense. We didn't get married because because we were hopelessly in love. Like, yeah, no, that's not the case. And she's beautiful. She's a beautiful woman, but it it has nothing to do with that. It has to do with our our lines of our lives being able to, 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 to cross paths and intersect and come to the same uh, uh, stop at the end of our journey. Um, yeah, that's, that's yeah. I would definitely do it again, brother. I just do it differently. That's all. All right. Thank you, Ken. That was very sage advice from a man who's been married for 17 years. And I think that your cell phone going off was your wife calling you. She heard him on the radio. We're talking about diversity, equity, and inclusion today. I'm going to take a break, come back continue our conversation, including reading some of your text messages at 833-212-1017, 833-212-1017. Make sure to download the free one on one seven, the truth app, or you can stream this program and all the programs across our lineup. And also if you haven't done so already, go to youtube.com or open up your YouTube app on your smartphone or your mobile device, search one Oh one seven, the truth, Hit subscribe, and then you can see what we're doing here in the studio live and in real time. The Truth with Sherwin Hughes will be right back. More of The Truth with Sherwin Hughes is next on 1017 The Truth, The Truth app, and 1017thetruth.com. Experience, knowledge, and results. That's what really matters when you need help after a serious truck accident. You'll need a lawyer experienced in fighting and winning for people just like you. Gruber Law Offices has the resources, strong track record of success, and a team of experienced lawyers to take care of your needs. We've successfully helped people injured in big truck accidents for more than 35 years. Gruber Law Offices. One call, that's all. Associated Bank knows your small business isn't just a venture. It's your dream and a vital part of the community. And we're not just a bank. We're your neighbors. We're looking out for you. That's why Associated Bank offers quick online applications and approvals with funding in as fast as one business day, checking with no minimum balances or maintenance fees, and prompt customer service. Explore our products at associatedbank.com slash business or visit a branch for more details. Subject to credit approval. Member FDIC. Equal housing lender. It's time for Truth Takes, a thought-provoking commentary on the new 1017 The Truth. Here is Denise Thomas with her truth. Truth Nation, there has been an ongoing debate in terms of what work ethic means, and primarily across generations. You hear phrases like, this new generation doesn't know the meaning of work. They're entitled. And the younger generation saying things like, the older people... They work way too hard and not smart enough. All perspectives have some extension of validity. I want to share with you something that I heard last weekend that really resonated with me as it relates to work ethic. And the quote was, a lot of people want to learn how to play the guitar, but they don't want to take the lessons. And so Truth Nation, as we continue to have ongoing conversations 
about the meaning of work and work ethic. I want to ask each of us to consider what work means to us. And in terms of what we are looking to gain from whatever aspect of work that we deliver every day, is it equal to what we want to gain? In other words, are you putting in the work that's not just short game or 60 seconds or less, but the work that is going to create a long impact on whatever return on the investment looks like for you? Let's start having more conversations about the meaning of work, making sure that we're aligned on what that looks and feels like, and ultimately not giving up on doing the work. Because goodness knows, we got a lot of work to do. This has been Truth Takes on the new 1017 The Truth. Listen to The Truth Be Told with DT and Telly weekdays from 7 a.m. to 9 a.m. This is The Truth with Sherwin Hughes on 1017 The Truth, The Truth app, and 1017thetruth.com. turn it when i start talking and you just you just ease the music down what is diversity equity and inclusion diversity equity and inclusion are three closely linked values held by many organizations that are working to be supportive of different groups of individuals including people of different races ethnicities religions abilities genders and sexual orientations i don't think that and somebody said this in one of the comments in the text messages or on YouTube. Sherwin, you can't speak on behalf of all women. You are correct. All Sherwin does is give you his editorial viewpoint from his life experience. Some relate, some cannot. There is nothing that I can say that everybody will relate to 100%. So, and I'm not trying to speak on behalf of all women. It's just when I have seen things and have been told things from women when they're being honest with me, this is where I get my information from. Like, I don't just make stuff up. But I also believe that men can't do a good job of representing women. Politically, I don't think we can do a good job of representing women. When it comes to hiring and creating a work environment, I don't think that men are very good at that. What we can do is we can listen to other women and give them more ownership and more accountability in creating the culture. Because what men will do is they will take their relationships that they have with the women in their lives, their mothers, their grandmothers, their aunts, their children, their daughters, and they'll form their understanding of women based on the women that they know. Or they'll get a stereotypical understanding of women, try and apply that in a professional setting or on the job, like the stereotypical impression they have of women, like from the media. And all of those are fundamentally wrong. They're flawed. And so men just cannot be good representatives of women. But white people can't be good representatives of black people either. Because y'all will agree that men cannot be good representatives politically, especially. Because look at what men have done to taking away a woman's rights to choose. And you don't really see a lot of women out front saying we want abortion to be illegal in every single case. Don't you find that the slightest bit unusual and unnerving? that you would think because this has to do with a woman's body that you would see more prominent pro-life women out to say, no, I'm a woman and I believe women should never have an abortion ever. Even if she gets raped, you would probably never hear a woman say that it's men. My personal opinion on abortion, that fetus is a part of that woman's body, whether you like it or not. The burden of carrying that child to term is on her. Her health may have negative and adverse impacts. She may die during childbirth. She may get gestational diabetes. A whole bunch of things can happen. She may have preeclampsia. She may be bedridden for her pregnancy. I'm going to make this as simple as I possibly can, and I hope to never have to debate this issue ever again. 
the embryo, the zygote, the fetus that is growing in that woman's body is a part of her body. And because it is a part of her body, she has every right to make whatever choice she wants about something that is a part of her body. Case closed. And y'all do whatever you want with your bodies. I've seen your tattoos. I don't have any tattoos. I'm very proud to say, and no shade against people that have tattoos. Many people have tattoos. Your tattoos mean stuff. Sometimes you got to get Got to get your kids' names tattooed on you. I mean, ladies, come on. You got to get a, a rose or a butterfly on your shoulder. How about on your ankle? Of course you do. Because, you know, I don't have any tattoos. But I, I defend someone's right to want to be able to tell their story with ink on their body. It's their body. They can make the choice to do that. What if we outlaw tattoos? You guys wouldn't like that very much, right? If they passed a constitutional amendment that says no one can get a tattoo. See there, you wouldn't like that. So that's enough about that. Coined in 1989 by critical race theorist Kimberly Crenshaw, intersectionality is a feminist sociological theory that centers around analyzing and discussing how oppression often intersects, creating unique and varied experiences of discrimination. So this lady, Kimberly Crenshaw, who I have to admit I never heard of her until this morning because I never thought to research who coined the term diversity, equity, and inclusion and belonging. And it's a black lady. There she is. I'm looking at her right now. Originally, intersectionality referred to the discrimination faced by black women that results not only from sexism and racism, but rather an experience that is more than the sum of the parts now referred to massage noir in black feminist and womanist circles. I wonder what's the difference between a feminist and a womanist. Since then, intersectionality has been explained to include the analysis of discrimination, discrimination, faced by anyone who identifies with the multiple social, biological, and cultural groups that are not favored in a patriarchal, capitalist, white supremacist society. I have additional information. Where does it talk about her coining DEI? This is all feminist theory. And I'm all, oh, they got videos here. I can't play those. So the woman who coined DEI came from the perspective of a womanist feminist with the emphasis on intersectionality. All right, makes sense. Variety, as they say, is the spice of life. Where is this one from? This is from the McKinsey Corporation. If diversity is another word for variety, how can it, how can it enhance or flavor the world? Diversity through the lens of race, ethnicity, ability, gender, sexual orientation, Neurodiversity and beyond can help strengthen organizations, as studies have shown time and time again. Quite simply, diversity, equity, and inclusion, DEI, is used to describe the three values that many organizations today strive to embody to help meet the needs of people from all walks of life. Here's where I fundamentally disagree. A corporation is not going to hire people to meet their needs. A corporation is going to hire people based upon how profitable you can make that company. And to the extent that diversity, equity, inclusion, and belonging makes a company profitable, they'll embrace it. And I would argue in certain fields and certain vocations and certain types of, you know, different organizations and products and services, having a diverse workforce will help you. Because if you need to extend your marketing to diverse audiences, especially as America becomes browner and browner and browner, white people are, are terrible at advertising to us. They always have been. You don't believe me? Mandela Barnes campaign advertisements for the U.S. Senate race, which even my Republican friends were like, yo, how did y'all lose to Ron Johnson? My Republican friends, like they're pre-Trump Republicans, but the, the real Republicans, right? They already resigned to the fact that they was going to lose Ron Johnson. They had already given up on Ron Johnson. Oh, yeah, he, we just, yeah, we're not going to be able to keep him because he was even too crazy for them. 
But here come Mandela Barnes. Y'all remember his commercials? Because we were very critical of them because his commercials were not reflective of what we know and understand either about him or of a black man's experience in Wisconsin. And he was running these commercials where I make peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. Remember when he made the peanut butter and jelly sandwiches? We're like, what is this? And then they show him going to like a Whole Foods and buying a piece of prime rib. And like, oh, a prime rib is expensive. I know how much you guys are suffering because prime rib is expensive for you too. That When white people try to market somebody black, we become the stereotypes of what white people think we actually are. Because they don't trust us with a marketing budget. Let's say Procter and Gamble or I don't know, Nestle or some other General Motors. Let's say they have a billion dollar marketing budget. One billion dollars where they have to figure out their strategy, how they're going to advertise in print, in magazines, newspapers, the internet, social media, Facebook, Instagram. They got to figure out how they're going to present their products to a very diverse world. Let's say Nestle wants to sell more Nestle products to black people. You would think hiring an African-American that can be in charge of outreach and diversity marketing and advertising to black people would be a natural fit because black people fundamentally, we know one another. Okay. But do you think for a second that a company is going to give a black executive a billion dollar budget? Never. The other part about racism in this country is white folks don't trust us with money. Don't believe me. Let a black person run for an executive position anywhere in this country. First thing they're going to do, and it sticks, they don't know how to handle money. They don't know how to budget. You can't trust them with the city's billion-dollar budget. That slogan I just said, you can't trust him with this city's billion-dollar budget, is what Tom Barrett used against Marvin Pratt when Tom Barrett got elected mayor of Milwaukee in 2004. Marvin Pratt had a We Energies bill that wasn't paid and had a vehicle, either his vehicle, I think it was his wife, Diane's vehicle, where they didn't re-register the the stickers. You know, you got to do your vehicle registration. And the Bear campaign literally used those two things to say that Marvin Pratt should not be elected mayor because he doesn't know how to manage or budget money. That is a stereotype and that is a trope, but guess what? It absolutely works. Whenever we are applying for or running for an executive position where you have to be in the budget-making process, they always use our financial illiteracy against us. Same thing in corporate America. If they have a billion dollars to spend on advertising and on marketing, what will happen is Tyrone will be the executive vice executive assistant. He won't be the senior VP of marketing. You're listening to The Truth with Sherwin Hughes on 101.7 FM. I'll be right back. More of The Truth with Sherwin Hughes is next on 1017 The Truth, The Truth app, and 1017thetruth.com. Milwaukee, we are in the heart of the basketball season, and we have all the local hoops news you need to hear. Get your weekly smile on with our Nothing But The Truth basketball report, brought to you by Bubon Orthodontics. On Nothing But The Truth, we'll keep you in the loop on all the local Milwaukee hoops news, from high school all the way to the pros. So don't miss your shot to join in on the hoops talk by tuning into the Truth Basketball Report on Nothing But The Truth right here on the new award-winning 1017 The Truth, brought to you by Bubon Orthodontics, the official smile of the Milwaukee Bucks. Happy Financial Literacy Month from Educators Credit Union. If you're dreaming of financial freedom, new ways to pay down debt, or tips to invest in your future, Educators Credit Union can help. They offer budgeting tools, personal finance courses, and debt solutions to turn your financial dreams into reality. Learn more at ecu.com. That is ecu.com. Membership at Educators Credit Union is open to anyone who lives or works in southeastern Wisconsin, and they are federally insured by by NCUA. All Brewers games are on sale now. Coming up, a weekend showdown with the Yankees, Friday, April 26th through Sunday, the 28th. Start the series with Friday's Hockey Night. Then take home a limited edition Brewer City Connect Tumbler Cup at the game on Saturday, the 27th. Presented by Quick Trip. Don't miss out on a marquee weekend of baseball. 
Grab your seats at brewers.com slash tickets. Ever feel stuck in a mental maze, endlessly spiraling? Sometimes an encouraging reminder helps. Be Sad, Keep Going is a mental health and wellness brand by Marina Miranda Creative that reminds you it's okay to feel sad as long as you keep moving forward. By embracing your emotions, you're not just improving your health, but rewriting the narrative for generations to come. Join the movement today and claim 10% off their range of apparel using code KEEPGOING10. That's KEEPGOING10 when you visit marinamirandacreative.com. Be Sad, Keep Going is dedicated to improving mental health by reminding you of your resilience. And look at how black, powerful people are covered in the media and portrayed. We're not talking about their innocence or guilt. We're talking about how it is handled. It is an attempt to continue to perpetuate the stereotype that black, powerful, wealthy people can only be black, powerful, wealthy people based on their criminal activities. And that is not consistent with other races or genders. You're so right when you look at a lot of the people that have risen to prominence with Bishop T.D. Jakes, man of the cloth. After you can reach a certain point and it's, oh, uh, he's this or he's doing that and tied him to Diddy. And the thing is, that is the common theme. And this goes back to the 60s. It goes back to Dr. King and, and Malcolm X and being on the FBI most wanted list. Tune in to all your favorite 1017 The Truth shows all day, every day by downloading the Truth app. It's The Truth with Sherwin Hughes on 1017 The Truth, The Truth app, and 1017thetruth.com. Creation Muse says the problem is everything becomes discriminatory. If you do not hire a person with tattoos on their face, your body, your choice, but choices have consequences. They do. I'm sorry, face tattoo people. I'm not hiring you. Just not. Got graffiti on your face. I probably shouldn't say anything about people that have tattoos on their faces because they're killers. They'll kill you. If you will put permanent ink on your face, you'll take a life. I'm just saying they got different priorities than the rest of us. I don't even want to ask why somebody would put a tattoo on their face. If you have tattooed teardrops, I think you killed somebody, right? So there's some truth to that. If you've got, Ricky, do you know if that's the truth? If somebody has, ta- wait a minute, you ain't got tattooed teardrops, do you, Ricky? You have do you have tattoos? What was the question? Do you have tattooed teardrops on your face? No, I have neck tattoos and arm tattoos. Okay. If someone has teardrops tattooed on their face, they killed somebody, correct? Correct. Okay. At least that's what it meant for the 80s, in, 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 in the 80s. All right. What's I don't it? know how true is that to today's society. No. Maybe today you're just emo. You just cry a lot. You just have tattoos. Because <laughs> I know people that got letters on their face along with the teardrops. Oh, so they have the initials of the people they murdered. That's pretty Possibly. cool. Possibly. It could be the initials of they, they name, or it could be the initials of a gang, or it could be the initials of the body they caught. Or maybe just don't tattoo your face and just write a book. Ditto. Okay. Thanks, Rick. Just need to get that cleared up. Creation Muse says, not sure what Jada book had in it, but I give her credit for not downing will because she got exposed barbara says i don't think most women like to be made to feel like they are competing with each other so i don't think most women fall for men who have a lot of wait a minute let me read that again i don't this is what barbara says i don't think most women like to be made to feel like they are competing with each other so i don't think most women fall for men who a lot of women want. Oh, good God. Yes, they do. If Idris Elba walked into the Third Street Market Hall right now, the number of women that would contemplate leaving their husbands and their children to be with him would be astounding. The reason why so many men have poor luck on dating apps, a lot of it is men don't know how to write to sell themselves to women. Men are not very good at that. But because something like 90% of the women 
are only interested in looking at and engaging with 5% of the men. Most men in America are celibate and not by choice. There's an internet counterculture, which is actually very dangerous. They're called incels. These are men who are involuntarily celibate. They want companionship. They want a woman. They want to get married. They want to date. They want to have a girlfriend, but they don't make the mark. They're not tall enough. They're not handsome enough. Their, their bodies aren't the right shape, right? They don't make the cut. Women only want, women are what we call hypergamous. And this is like nothing that's new. Women want the best man they can possibly get. And they should, because if they pick the wrong man, he'll kill her. And she's got, she may be tied to this man forever, especially if she has his children. So women want the best man they can possibly get. Problem is, all women want the best man they can possibly get. With men, we don't necessarily want the best woman we can possibly get ever. We want the best and available woman that's available right now, in this moment. Who is the best I can do at this moment where I am in my life right now? And that is why when you see when men are at the bottom and they marry, and then their careers explode, their popularity explodes, their wealth explodes, then they want a different woman. I'm not saying that men don't ride or die for the woman that they met when they had nothing, but you'll see when a lot of men get to the pinnacle of their success and their wealth and their earning potential, that is when they either step out on the woman that has been with them or they get divorced. That's just... The difference is between the genders, and we get mad at each other for it, and we yell at each other and scream at each other and try to have a radio show about diversity, equity, and inclusion, and you guys rope me against my will into talking about relationships, which when you think about it is, is racist. Whenever you guys make me change the subject, that is your racism. And now I'll be back for hour three. The truth with Sherwin Hughes will be back in a couple of minutes. One hundred one seven, The Truth and Associated Bank have teamed up for our Black-Owned Business Give Back. Each quarter, we'll be giving away $6,000 worth of free commercial advertising for three months to five black businesses. To sign up for your business's chance to win $6,000 of commercial campaign marketing on the award-winning 1017 The Truth, visit blackbusinessgiveback.com. That's blackbusinessgiveback.com. Let's rebuild our community's backbone through exposure on the truth. For official rules, head to blackbusinessgiveback.com. Associated Bank, member FDIC. Truth Nation, tune in Wednesday night at 6 p.m. for the Thanasis podcast on the award-winning 1017 The Truth. Thanasis will be joined by former Buck and brother of Brooke, Robin Lopez. They will discuss all things basketball in a shocking detail you will not believe about Robin's iconic hair. Do not miss the Thanasis podcast on The Truth Wednesday night at 6 p.m. on 1017 The Truth, Milwaukee Black Talk. One smile is great, but one smile in a community of smiles is so much better. A smile has a secret power that most people don't know about. A smile multiplies. It spreads from one person to the next, stretching across entire groups of people. Smile Train knows this and is proud to be creating a wave of smiles across the cleft lip and palate community in over 70 countries. Patients, doctors, advocates, fundraisers. Collectively, our smiles are a celebration of the transformed lives of over 1.5 million children. Learn how Smile Train is helping the cleft lip and palate community at smiletrain.org slash learn. Smile Train, changing the world one smile at a time. An unsuspecting driver at a gas station in Wisconsin. Welcome, Pump 15. How you doing? Great. Were you wearing your seatbelt today? I never wear my seatbelt. We're going to get him. We're going to get him real good. Oh, my goodness. Hello, sir. How you doing? Dollar driver. It takes one second to strap a seatbelt on. Well, let's do this. Let's do it together. Now, don't that feel better? Donald Driver can't always be there to remind you. Click it or tick it. And let's reduce fatalities on Wisconsin roadways. And I should have recognized your voice when you were harassing <laughs> I'm watching you. Sponsored by Wisconsin DOT. The YMCA is just a starting line for the true self blooms only when we find our purpose, what makes us tick below the surface. 
My why is diversity and unity, a safe space in my community, living with sincerity, giving every day my everything. With my why, I stand strong, seen and supported all along. It's a million faces in a mirror and everyone belongs. Find your why. Learn more at ymca.org for a better us. Milwaukee's Black Talk lives here. You are listening to 1017 FM, 1510 AM, WGKB Waukesha, and W269DL Milwaukee, a locally owned Good Karma brand station. This is The Truth with Sherwin Hughes on 1017 The Truth, The Truth app, and 1017thetruth.com. Truth with Sherwin Hughes. I'm going to read some comments and some text messages. But I also want to share with you this article that I found in a publication called The Nation. And most of what I discuss on this program, I'll share those articles and those links in our Facebook group called Hughes Views. So if you want more information about anything that we discussed, you can go to the Hughes Views Facebook group and you'll have all the articles and the links and you can share them and you can argue with your friends and family. The article is called Donald Trump's Christian Soldiers. And when I say it is riveting and it is fascinating because it goes deep into the relationship, an unbreakable bond, this doting affection that evangelical Christians have for Donald Trump, who a lot of us could agree is about as antithetical to Christian values as you can get. Let me give you just one example. His trial starts today about the hush money he paid to a porn star. That's adultery. He cheated on his wife with a lady named Stormy Daniels. His trial starts today. It is powerful. But there's this connection, this relationship, which is really worth examining because these are our fellow countrymen and countrywomen. And as I read this article, a lot of it is relatable because when you have this stereotypical image of who a Donald Trump supporter is, these are the people that come to mind. But it also, it gives you a level of empathy for them because what they think God and Jesus and the Bible is and their understanding, their interpretation, their fairy tale view of America, they're losing it. They're losing their grip on their understanding of what this country is. They are against wokeness. They're against affirmative action. They're against diversity. They're against immigrants. Anything that does not put God first and foremost is a threat to them. And they feel like the Christian values of this nation are all being eroded and evaporated at the same time they are seeing threats to their longevity because there are more and more people of color and more and more minorities in this country so they feel threatened and Donald Trump tells them exactly what they want to hear even if it's wrong it's stereotypical if it's racist they eat it up because they have this idealistic view of what America is and their idealistic view of what America is America has never been that I don't know really what America is. It's a place where you got a lot of rich people and a lot of poor people. And then you got people that go to the gym all the time and post selfies. It's a very weird place. America, how would you even describe America to somebody? The history of civil rights violations and racism, systemic and institutional racism and sexism and the patriarchy and then capitalism screws up everything. We try to capitalize financially off of everything. There's another article I'm not going to get to it today, but it talks about people that are obese or people that have eating disorders. 
Like we have found a way to capitalize off of that. Now people take Ozempic and they take drugs that are to treat certain ailments. But if a side effect of the drug is weight loss, now they become weight loss drugs. And these pharmaceutical companies are making money hand over fist. Let me read some of these text messages here. Chauncey says, yes, of course, she, Michelle Obama, found out Barack Obama was cheating or and maybe even outright pre-condoned it. She just didn't say anything. Too much to lose had she squealed. So I'm not going to make this a referendum on Michelle Obama because a bunch of y'all will get even more offended than you already are. But if she did not marry, I'm not saying she wouldn't have been great, but the chances of us knowing who she was would have been diminished because there's a lot of black women that are attorneys and went to Harvard and went to all the fancy schools. And maybe we would have, maybe she would have run for president, maybe. But her being with him elevated her to where now she is more than a household name. She is a beacon of light and hope for women and girls, men too, even. But she also came out with a, she wrote an article and it hurt my feelings. You know what I'm talking about? The article where she said for 10 years she didn't like her husband. She said for 10 years of their marriage, she just didn't like him. That offended me. Because when you are involved, and maybe they kept the partnership afloat, they kept the relationship going, maybe they did it for the children or whatever excuse that people give to be unhappy. When you are involved with somebody that you don't like, it's a miserable existence. It's miserable for you both. So if she is going to be with a man and still be married to a man that she admitted she didn't like for a decade, not like a week, not a year, 10 years, Michelle Obama said she did not like her husband. Then she might, maybe he cheated. Maybe that's why she didn't like him for 10 years. Who knows? But I also think that that goes to, it defies people's expectations of marriage. Marriages can be horrible. Painful, ugly, you can feel alone, disconnected, emotionally withdrawn, no sex at all. The sex is gone. That's one of the first things to go. I think people, we watch too much TV and see too much social media, like, oh, I'm going to get married and it's going to be perfect. There'll probably be a period of time where you hate your spouse. There will absolutely be a period of time where you regret getting married. Every married person I've ever talked to imagines their life without their spouse. Or they'll say stuff like, I can't wait for you to die. And it may sound like they're joking. They're not. They're not joking. They're not joking. Sheila says, small problem with that, Sherwin. Are the cats only having sex with other cats? Because if they're having sex with dogs, they would have been caught too from what you're saying. How did you mess that up, Sheila? I'm saying that cats are much more discreet when they're having sex with other cats. I've never seen two cats hump. I don't even know how they do it. Do they do it missionary? Do they start with oral? Do they tie each other up in little bondage outfits and put a little ball gag in each other's little cat mouths? I've never seen it before. Uh, you can walk out on Wisconsin Avenue right now and see two dogs humping. Or you ever go to a friend's house and a dog humps your leg? We see it all the time. Like, dogs are sex-obsessed. What do you Cats mean by are that? too. You know exactly what I mean by that. All of a sudden, a cat is pregnant, and it's got 37 kittens. Or the cat will sneak out at night. Like the whore that she is. And find a tomcat somewhere in the alley. At first, they'll drink some Hennessy. Smoke some cat crack. Eat some catnip. Eat it. And then she'll do her deed and she'll sneak back in the house. Next thing you know, you're trying to give away 13 kittens. Cats are just more discreet. When a woman is unfaithful, her routine doesn't change. And that's why men are so painfully oblivious to when a woman is being unfaithful. First of all, our egos are too big for us to even comprehend that a woman could ever be unfaithful to us. Men in that regard are stupid. Oh, we are so stupid. Never put anything past a woman. But if she's like into you and she's in love with you, she'll be so faithful. 
She'll take good care of you. She'll make sure that you're okay. But a lot of times we ignore, because a woman will warn us an infinite amount of times that things aren't going well. And either you are able to pay attention and communicate with her and try and figure out a solution, or you're going to get played, good sir. She may be unfaithful and you would never know it because her routine is not going to change. When men cheat, we come home at 3 o'clock in the morning with lipstick on our face. We come home smelling like perfume or the telltale sign that has been the bane of a man's existence since the dawn of time. Glitter. Glitter. Whoever made glitter. I want to know who made it. I want to make sure we do not celebrate their birthday. Whoever invented glitter, you should never have a national holiday. Because glitter is unforgiving. Do you think every woman wears glitter? The right ones do. (laughs) (laughs) But I'm just saying, if she wears glitter and you have any kind of physical contact with anybody that wears glitter, it's going to be on you. And your wife, all your wife needs to see, what's one piece? Because glitter is usually plural. What's one, a glit? If your wife sees a single glit, who was she with? You mean, well, I don't know what you're talking about. I see a glit on your forehead. You go try to wipe your forehead. I don't see it. And it don't come off. You can't you can't forget that, you know, back in the eighties and nineties, you know, y'all didn't have cell phones, so y'all actually had to write numbers down on a piece of paper and put it in your pocket. And got caught. Because your wife would do the laundry. Went through them went did laundry, went through them pockets, caught it. Yeah. But now you can get caught. Probably just as easy because people leave a trail of breadcrumbs all on their social media. I feel like social media is a big influence on getting caught in, in cheating. It is, but I wouldn't say it encourages it. Somebody no, not can at all. be faithful. You can get in trouble for liking a pic. That's yeah. considered cheating. That's an insecure woman, though. Because yeah. if a man likes her pictures... That's welcomed and accepted, but if you like somebody else's pictures, so then you got to think about it. Why is it okay for her to get all the likes and if for him to send a single like? I like a picture for the algorithm. That's it. I don't care about her. And plus, there's nothing new on the Internet. There's nothing, there's no picture that someone can post that does not exist somewhere else that's probably ten times better. So, But, okay, when a woman cheats, her routine is not going to change. So when we cheat... We come home at 4 o'clock in the morning with lipstick and a, and a piece of glit on our forehead. She'll cheat. She's still coming home from work at 530. She's still making dinner. She's still going and picking up the kids. Her cheat will fit into the expected routine. You won't really notice anything different unless you start looking at her wardrobe. She's now dressing a little better. Really caring about her appearance. Wearing all sorts of fancy lingeries now. All right, what is this? Um, Leon says most Hollywood relationships are business relationships. All right, some of these don't make any sense because I'm so far behind in reading them. Sandra Clark just sent me a Wikipedia link about Topsy the Elephant. What the hell is Topsy the Elephant? Now I got to look it up. Let me see what this is. And I say that I don't ever click on links that you guys send me. But this one just looks so compelling. Let's see here. Topsy. 1875. And the elephant died in 1903. was a female Asian elephant who was electrocuted at Coney Island, New York in January of 2003. Born in Southeast Asia around 1875, Topsy was secretly brought to the United States soon thereafter and added to the herd of performing elephants at a circus who fraudulently advertised her as the first elephant born in the United States. Why in the hell did you send me that? At what point of this show... Did you think it was okay to send me a Wikipedia page about Topsy the Electrocuted Elephant? Now I feel compelled to keep reading it. 
During her 25 years at the circus, Topsy gained a reputation as a, quote, bad elephant. And after killing a spectator in 1902, was sold to Coney Island's Sea Lion Park. Sea Lion Park was leased out at the end of 1902 season, and during the construction of the park that took its place, Luna Park, Topsy was used in publicity stunts and also involved in several publicized incidents attributed to the actions of either her drunken handler or the park's new publicity-hungry owners, Frederick Thompson and Elmer Skip Dundee. And it's literally a drawing of an elephant. Sandra says, good morning, Sherwin. I sent that. Watch video and tell me what you think. You want me to watch a video about an elephant that died 121 years ago? The caller says, great take by brother Ken. Sounds like he had common goals with his wife and that they combined those goals and became a family. Bradford says, oops, he said anonymous. I mean, Jonathan says, after dating my daughter's mother for 17 years, never been married, just a long engagement. If I would have gotten married, I think I would be divorced by now. Someone is always trying to get more leverage over the other. Okay. Ray says, maybe Donald Trump thought it wasn't cheating. He thought it was just porn policy. Oh, no, Trump knew full well he was cheating. But his wife tolerated it. Do you think that you would know who Melania Trump is had she not married Donald Trump? So that's an example, and maybe it's a bad one, of how some women will tolerate terrible behavior from their men, but to get the money and the status and to get the notoriety, they just stick with some of these men. Sheila says, sure. When I have to admit, I do have a greater appreciation for the way you broach the uncomfortable subjects and somehow make them light enough to have discussions about. Typically your warped sense of humor helps. Hey, there's nothing warped about my sense of humor. Chauncey, I'm not going to read the fact that you stated something that should be obvious. Chauncey says, I've never seen a cat have sex with a dog. All right. J.D. the Poet sends. Oh, definition of the inventor of glitter. Glittering services have been found to have been used since prehistoric times in the arts and in cosmetics. The modern English word glitter comes from the Middle English glittering, possibly by the way of Old Norse glittera. However, as early as 30,000 years ago, mica flakes were used to give cave paintings a glittering appearance. Prehistoric humans were believed to have used cosmetics made of powdered hermatite, a sparkling mineral. Women created glitter to catch their men 30,000 years ago. They was in the caves. There's a unga unga bunga. Unga, unga bunga, glitter. I'm going to catch you if you're cheating with the other cave woman, unga bunga. Damn. The Truth with Sherwin Hughes on 1017 FM. We'll be right back. More of The Truth with Sherwin Hughes is next on 1017 The Truth, The Truth app, and 1017thetruth.com. April is Financial Literacy Month, and The Truth has you covered when learning about how you can best manage your finances. Tune in all month long as a representative from Educators Credit Union will be joining us to discuss financial strategies and tools they offer members to help enhance your financial management skills. Dig deep and spring clean your finances by joining us for Financial Literacy Month. Financial Literacy Month on the award-winning 1017 The Truth is sponsored by Educators Credit Union. Achieving more together. The Empowerment Small Business Loan Program, we're talking about up to five 
million dollars, which for small business owners, we need that. That's like payroll, that's resources. So can you just let us know what is the program and why is this lending program so important to Old National Bank? Years ago, our uh, CEO, Jim Ryan, this program is his brainchild. He was working with Roland Shelton, who yes. you know, Denise, out of Evansville, and they identified that African-American business owners, uh, Hispanic business owners, Native American business owners, as well as women business owners had a difficult time in obtaining finance from the traditional credit partners. And so we went out, created a program, launched it last year, 2023. And so far last year, we have helped over 100 successful minority and women-owned businesses with about $25 million in loans. We have already started this year with almost $8 million in approvals, again, geared toward minority business owners and women business owners that normally had difficulties in in obtaining uh, traditional credit finance. All insurance companies, they want to know where are your cars housed. Uh, They want to know how far you driving and get to and from work every day. Mm -hmm. They want to know all these different things for weather patterns. Are you living in northern Wisconsin or are you living down in Tornado Alley somewhere in Kentucky. These things make a difference as to how your insurance rates are formed. I need you to be factual. And every single time somebody commits these different frauds, it all adds up and everybody ends up paying the price for it down the road. Erie Insurance, providing the protection you need and the service you expect, all at a great price. Gain skills to lead community-based organizations and develop creative solutions for social change with a bachelor's degree in community engagement and education from the University of Wisconsin-Milwaukee. Created in collaboration with the community, this program provides a home for students interested in social justice. Learn alongside diverse students and supportive faculty. The program can be completed fully online and you can earn credit for professional experience. Learn more by going to uwm.edu slash c. E-E-D. Wisconsin is as hardworking of a place as you'll ever find. There's a sense of pride, community, and work ethic that's second to none. People here are tough, but even the toughest among us need help after a serious accident. At Gruber Law Offices, we won't stop fighting for you and your family. We've been here and will continue to be here for as long as you need us. Gruber Law Offices. One call. That's all. It's the truth with Sherwin Hughes on 1017 The Truth, The Truth app, and 1017thetruth.com. I do want to get to this article about these uh, evangelicals that have just, they fall in, have fallen in love for Trump. And in fact, Their love for him is becoming stronger the more trouble that he gets in. But before I get to that, let me tell you what my issue is with this. And I am not one, shouldn't be one, to say anything negative about somebody else's marriage. But when it's available for public consumption, then we can give our opinions on it, right? I think somebody had said in the comments that my, here, I'll read it. Blessed says, no hate, Sherwin, but it seems like you aren't an advocate for marriages as much. A lot of your examples are negative. Marriage is not an advocate for marriage because half of them fail. Let me give you an example. If you got to graduate from high school and your average is 50%, you're not going to graduate from high school. That's a failing grade. You know what I think it is? Over the last... 60 years. So 60 years ago would have been 1964. Women have changed. Men have not. Women are entrepreneurs. They're independent. They're educated. They can do a lot on their own. They're taking on new roles and new tasks. In fact, in a lot of situations, women have to play dual roles, the man and the woman. They're the primary breadwinners in a lot of families especially in the black community. And so women have changed, especially as they have entered into the workforce and start to dominate certain fields. Women are in politics now more than ever. They're making rules and ordinances and laws, right? So women have changed. The culture of women and womenhood has changed. Men, we haven't changed that much. We want the same thing, don't we? Men haven't really gotten more sophisticated. If anything, we have become even more simple. What I want as a man, 
from a woman other than I think pr- pretty much what I want from a woman is the same. I'm how old am I? Forty nine. It's been the same since I was twenty five. Now I just want her to be smart, like really intelligent. Back then, I'm like, eh, I can, if I had to trade hotness for intelligence, you know what I mean? That scale was kind of tipped in the favor of hotness. But now I want a woman that's like really intellectual, that's very smart. In fact, I prefer a woman that's smarter than me so I can learn from her. But she ain't going to want to date me because she'd be like, oh, sure, when you're dumb. But for the most part, our preferences as men have stayed the same. We have stayed the same as men. And the world is forcing us to change because we have very antiquated views about things, right? And so I think that's part of it when when women's interface with the world is different and men's interface with the world has stayed the same. It makes it tough to find compromise. But here's the issue that I have with Michelle Obama saying, and so I have the actual article here. It's not that she didn't like Barack Obama. She said that she couldn't stand her husband for a decade while the couple's children were young. Former First Lady Michelle Obama has said, quote, she couldn't stand her husband for a decade while the couple's children were young. In frank comments to the black news station Revolt TV, Michelle Obama, one of the most popular women in America, said that raising children had put strains on her three-decade marriage to Barack Obama, the U.S. president, for two four-year terms beginning in 2009. Quote, people think I'm being catty by saying this. It's like there were 10 years where I couldn't stand my husband, she told a roundtable forum. And guess what happened? Guess when it happened, when those kids were little. That's perfectly fine for her to say that. In fact, that makes sense. But, Michelle, you don't say it to the media. You don't say that to a publication because that makes Barack Obama look like he's inept. And I rather like Barack Obama for what he did for the country and the image that he portrayed of a black man. And then Michelle got to say she don't like him. What Michelle should have done is say, hey, Barack, I don't like you. And I'm sure she probably did. You don't say that to the media. There are some things that are non-starters. A couple's business is their business. You don't tell your mama. You don't tell your sister. You don't tell your best friend about problems you are having in your relationship. You got problems in your relationship? Go to therapy. Go to therapy. Do not enlist another human being in problems you are having in your relationship. Men, you too. But we don't do that. Ah, maybe we do. Women will tell their mamas and their sisters and their aunties about all the terrible things that her man does. She'll, they'll never mention the good stuff because you can't be happy and gloat about your man to women who are perpetually single. They don't want to hear that. They only want to hear your misery. So they're never going to talk about the good, wonderful things he does because he. this woman knows that she can't brag about her man to women that will never have one. But she talks about how terrible he is, how much he lies and he cheats and he stays out late and he drinks too much or whatever the case may be. And so her whole social circle only hears about the negative things that her husband does. And guess what? They hate him. And once the social support for a relationship is eroded and dissolved, then the relationship is on thin ice because now she's going to start listening to all of these people that she indoctrinated. Cause remember she told her mom and her auntie and her sisters how horrible her husband is. Cause she only tells them the bad things that she does, or she only calls them crying. They eventually may convince her to leave him girl, leave him and get that child support. Let's talk to Sandra. You're on one one seven. The truth. How are you? I'm fine. How are you today? I'm doing well, thank you. Especially on a Monday. You sound pretty good, too. Oh. Speaking of women and relationships and cats and dogs, that's why I sent you that uh, on top of the elephant. And I just said that because uh, you can just see how um, inhumane human people are. You know, because uh, the same thing they did to that elephant they were doing to slaves years ago. They took the elephant, and if you play the, a video, you can see the whole thing. They took the elephant, they tied his uh, big feet up, and then they gave him cyanide, 
and then they put a rope around his neck to choke him, and then they electrocuted him. At the time, Thomas Edison wanted to get famous, you know. And I'm just seeing, you know, we got, because you always hear a lot of people say they treat a dog better than me. And I'm just saying because, I mean, a dog don't know no better. All they know is um, commands. You got to go over and over for that to sink in. But we humans are supposed to know better. I mean, a lot of them are supposed to be educated, are educated. A lot of them just plain old crazy. I mean, a lot of them racist. And this is why you got this big evangelical thing going on. Um, they've been they've, they've been doing all of this for years, but they're really doing it now because they think Trump is their real savior guy. And Trump, I don't know why everything is on him because he is not the one uh, uh, that's putting all of this together. Steve Bannon, all of them. Uh, David Bloom, that little lawyer that tore away affirmative action and all that stuff. So I don't even know why they want us to focus on. They ain't gonna do nothing to that man. But we always pay the price for breaking the law. They ain't going to do nothing. He's going to come out of there smiling, and then they're going to say, oh, we're going to vote for him more, vote for him more. But once he get that dictatorship, they're going to be falling just like the ones that try to speak up in Russia. What's that guy named that just died in the prison in Russia? I can't think of his name. I don't know. It's a bunch of them, but I know who you're talking about. But the one that was in prison, and he was uh, like, uh, you know, ad- advocated for human their rights over there. And so, and you know who's going, who's at the bottom over here in America is always the black people. But if you, I, I just wanted you to watch the film and tell me what you thought about it. That's what I say. It, is, it, it has nothing, it has something to do with love and stuff like that. So it's more of a love of animals and how you treat animals. And I have animals. I had like about, I, I'd say about eight. I had four at one time. Damn. And I took care, I would never give them away. What kind never. of animals you got? I would never. Eight of what? I, I had, well, I had two to die, not two, you know, back around 99, around on that area, a little bit after 99. And then I had, uh, um, I had four that just died within the last You're two You're speaking years just in numbers. I'm asking what kind of animals were they? Oh, okay. Oh, one was a Brittany. One was a, a Spangle. Spangle. The dogs. Was like a golden retriever. Yeah, dogs. The dogs, yeah. Okay. One was a Brittany, yeah. One was a Spangle. He's uh, uh, like a Spaniel mixed with a Cocker Spaniel. I had a small cocker spaniel. I had like a little ch- chihuahua. I got another little chihuahua I like now, but uh, he's a, a different little something, something. But, um, you know, and then I keep animals for my sister, but I have kept children. It ain't like I leave human beings out. I, ha- I help children. I help nurse people back to health. And, I, you know, I got brothers and relatives that got sick and cousins and all, you know. So I, I just, I, I favor life and I favor, I favor helping all that you can help like animals you know you gotta be careful because some of them might bite you but no i just kind of sent you that just so you could see how inhumane you know i know you know but it just it boggles my mind and then they get up here and say black people this black people that they commit crime who could be the worst committing crime than the stuff you see that's negative but anyway so if you get a chance to watch it i'd like for you to watch it okay before you go what is the most number of animals that you have owned or cared for at one time? Uh, four at one time. Okay. All right. Thank you, Sandra. Mm-hmm. Appreciate your call. Okay. All thank right. you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. So she sent me a video of an elephant that's been dead for 121 years. I'll watch it. I will. I just won't watch it now. When I come back, I'm going to talk about the love affair that evangelical Christians have with Donald Trump. You're listening to The Truth with Sherwin Hughes on 101.7. Make sure you download the 101.7 The Truth app where you can stream this program, download podcasts, and win prizes. Don't go anywhere. I'll be right back. More of The Truth with Sherwin Hughes is next on 101.7 The Truth, The Truth app, and 1017thetruth.com. Brewers Five County Fridays are now Wisconsin First Fridays. Get half price Brewers tickets for the entire state of Wisconsin at the First Friday Brewers home game every month. Come cheer on the Brewers from any corner of the Badger State and get 50% off your seats. Take advantage of this special offer and don't miss out on Friday night baseball all season. Check out the complete Brewers schedule of Wisconsin First Fridays and get your tickets now at Brewers.com slash Wisconsin Fridays.
Happy Financial Literacy Month from Educators Credit Union. If you're dreaming of financial freedom, new ways to pay down debt, or tips to invest in your future, Educators Credit Union can help. They offer budgeting tools, personal finance courses, and debt solutions to turn your financial dreams into reality. Learn more at ecu.com. That is ecu.com. Membership at Educators Credit Union is open to anyone who lives or works in southeastern Wisconsin, and they are federally insured by NCUA. It's time for Truth Takes, a thought-provoking commentary on the new 1017 The Truth. Here is Sherwin Hughes with his truth. I think you're spoiled. You have too many choices. We sometimes forget that having choice is a luxury. I can remember when I was a little kid, I either ate what my mother cooked for dinner or I starved. I didn't have the luxury of choice. Now we can choose anything and everything. We can choose which apps we want to be a part of. We can go and pick a new mate. We can decide what food we want to order. We have an unlimited amount of choice. And I think that we forget that choice is a luxury. You are either a winner or you're a loser. You're either going up or you're going down. You're either free or a slave. You're either woke or you are asleep. Those are called binary choices, and it's tough for people to understand just having two choices in a world that inundates us with unlimited choice. I know you don't like the candidates that are on your ballot come November. Guess what? They probably don't like you either, but you only have a binary choice. You either want this country to excel and succeed and explore new industries and be honest and fair about racial inequity. You either believe in climate change or you don't. You believe in democracy or you don't. You want a country that will do whatever it can to help people, all people, regardless of gender identity, regardless of national origin, or you want to take the low road and vote for the person that only wants to help himself with no regard for anyone else. Choice is a luxury. Unfortunately, too many of us forget that it's a luxury. Binary choice is all you have in November. I hope you choose wisely. This has been Truth Takes on the new 1017 The Truth. Listen to The Truth with Sherwin Hughes weekdays from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. This is The Truth with Sherwin Hughes on 1017 The Truth, The Truth app, and 1017thetruth.com. Barbara says, you cannot put a woman in a box and expect her not to talk about, talk to anyone about how she feels with what is happening in her relationship. I think that is what you were expecting. Good luck with that. No, I'm not. But relationships are personal. And they are private. You do not want your dirty laundry. You don't want your man airing your dirty laundry. Don't air his. The relationship is private. First, you have a discussion with, that's what's disingenuous about it. There is no solution to your relationship problems by talking to your mama who's never been married. That's the issue. Talk to the person you are in the commitment with. The person that's there for you in sickness and in health and richer or poorer, if y'all can't figure it out, then you got to work on that. And going outside of, like, that's a form of cheating too. Exposing private, personal, intimate details. Ladies, do you want your man, the equivalent would be your man telling all his friends what you're like in bed. No, that's private. You do that stuff for him. When a woman exposes the things that she doesn't like or the, complaint she has about her man or somebody else. That's the exact same thing as us exposing intimate details about our woman. Y'all don't like that. We don't like it either. That's why relationships fail. Y'all want to include everybody. Y'all want to post everything on the social media with your partner. Well, you ain't got to do all that. Everybody ain't got to know what you're doing at all times. I don't know where. It must be the social media. We got to let folks know even in our personal lives. I can see if you check in when you go out to a restaurant. Okay, cool. Check in at the restaurant. Sharing all these details about your your boyfriend, your girlfriend, or your spouse. You ain't got to do all that. How important are the white evangelical Christians to Donald Trump's political fate and to the MAGA movement he inspired? In both 2016 and 2020 presidential election cycles, nearly half of Trump's voters 
where white evangelical Christians by far the most reliable block of voters in his electoral coalition. In the year 2016, 135,500,000 voters cast ballots for president. According to exit polls, 26% of them, or 35.2 million voters, identified themselves as white evangelical or born-again Christians. Trump got 80% of their votes, a total of 28.2 million voters. That accounts for 45% of the 62.6 million votes he received. Four years later, 158,400,000 Americans voted for president. The exit polls reveal that 28% of them, or 44.4 million voters, were white evangelicals or born-again Christians. Among them, 76% voted for Trump. That's 33.7 million white evangelical votes for Trump, 45.4% of his total, 74.2 million votes. The number of white evangelical Christians in the United States population is a matter of some dispute. The U.S. Census doesn't ask questions about Americans' religious identities or beliefs. A 2020 survey by the Public Religion Research Institute, or the PRRI, found that 14% of Americans identify as white, non-Hispanic, evangelical Christians. Oh, I find this fascinating. That is pretty much the identical percentage of people that identify as black. So white evangelical Christians or born-again Christians are 14% of the population. We as African Americans are also 14% of the population. 80% of them vote for Donald Trump. 90% of us vote for Democrats. A Pew Research Center survey conducted the same year put the number at about 16% of white evangelicals or born-again Christians. Whatever figure that is used, the proportion of white evangelical voters is clearly much higher than their share in the whole population. White evangelicals' turnout rates are considerably higher than other religious groups in the country. On a wide range of religious, political, and social beliefs, White evangelicals differ sharply from Americans in general and other religious groups, including Catholics, mainline non-evangelical Protestants, Jews, and those without any religious identity or affiliation, and even black and Hispanic evangelicals. These strong beliefs are reinforced by dense social ties. Half of white evangelicals attend church at least once a week. White evangelicals are self-isolating because they believe that the rest of the world is evil, explained Paul DeJupe, a political scientist at Denison University in Ohio. There is a parallel society among evangelicals that does not intersect with the rest of the world. They not only go to church together, they also go to evangelical plumbers, evangelical hairstylists, and others who provide the services that they need. Being a white evangelical is as much a political identity as it is a religious one, noted Ryan Berge, a political scientist at Eastern Illinois University. Sixty percent of white evangelicals today believe that the Republican Party is friendly toward religion, but only eight percent think that the Democratic Party is as friendly toward religion. This transformation has evolved since the 1980s when President Ronald Reagan embraced the evangelical movement, and they embraced him right back led by religious and political entrepreneurs like Reverend Jerry Falwell and the Reverend Pat Robertson. According to Berge, white evangelicals are, quote, reluctant Republicans. Oh, no, no, they're not reluctant Republicans who need to be actively recruited to vote and cast their ballots for GOP candidates. They are thoroughly Republican. This trend has, has intensified since Trump first ran for president in 2015, as white evangelicals increasingly identify with the MAGA movement and its apocalyptic views of racial resentments. This is borne out by numerous social science studies and survey data. So I'm going to take a break, come back, and go a little bit deeper into these evangelicals and the MAGA movement, how it is made up overwhelmingly of white evangelical Christians. We're listening to The Truth with Sherwin Hughes on 1017 FM. I'll be right back. More of The Truth with Sherwin Hughes is next on 1017 The Truth, The Truth app, and 1017thetruth.com. Get the beat of the buck straight from a fan favorite and Bucks legend. Tap into Here District with Marcus Johnson, a Bucks Plus audio production. Your weekly pulse on the Milwaukee Bucks and conversations with the biggest names in basketball. 
This week, Marcus and his son Chris are joined by Milwaukee Bucks president, Peter Fagan. Find Your District now on Bucks.com slash plus, the Bucks app, or wherever you get your podcast. The Empowerment Small Business Loan Program, we're talking about up to $5 million, which for small business owners, we need that. That's like payroll, that's resources. So can you just let us know what is the program and why is this lending program so important to Old National Bank? Years ago, our uh, CEO, Jim Ryan, this program is his brainchild. He was working with Roland Shelton, who yes. you know, Denise, out of Evansville. And they identified that African-American business owners, uh, Hispanic business owners, Native American business owners, as well as women business owners had a difficult time in obtaining financing from the traditional credit partners. And so we went out, created a program, launched it last year in 2023. And so far last year, we have helped over 100 successful minority and women-owned businesses with about $25 million in loans. We have already started wow. this year with almost $8 million in approvals, again, geared toward minority business owners and women business owners that normally had difficulties in, in obtaining a traditional credit finance. At We Energies, we're committed to building a bright, sustainable energy future. We're investing in clean energy projects like solar, wind, and battery storage. As a leader in the decarbonization effort, our goal is to achieve net zero carbon emissions from our generation fleet by 2050. It's part of our plan to provide the affordable, reliable, and clean energy you depend on. Learn more at weenergies.com. We Energies, people you can trust, energy you can depend on. This message was paid for by the stockholders of WEC Energy Group. It's early in the year and we're trying to hit these fitness goals. Zero to 100 Fitness is dedicated to the Milwaukee community, offering affordable and quality fitness and mixed martial arts programs for the last 10 years. They have competitive and novice classes in MMA, kickboxing, and grappling for all skill levels and ages. From youth, community outreach, women's self-defense, and personal safety programs, Zero to 100 Fitness will help you on your journey to greatness. So get up off the couch and into the best shape of your life. Call 414-522-1275 today. Bikers need protection, not just from other drivers, but unfortunately from insurance companies too. We've been fighting for injured bikers and their families for more than 30 years. Call Gruber Law Offices today. One call, that's all. When you're high, you feel different. Pretty obvious, right? You think different, talk different, but if you feel different, you drive different. So if you're high, just don't drive. Brought to you by NHTSA and the Ad Council. It's The Truth with Sherwin Hughes on 1017 The Truth, The Truth app, and 1017thetruth.com. Bring it back, bust it, bust it wide open, I tell them bring it back, back. Bust it open, get you some. Bust it open, get you some. Bust it open, bust it open. Bust it, bust it, bust it out, get, get, get you some. Bust it open, bust it out. Hi, Al. Al, you have a theme song. Hey, what's up? I see. Well, okay. It's nice. Uh, moving forward, <clears throat> the marriage is a, is a construct. It's, a, it's, it's, it's made by the church. It's just a contract that says I pretty much own you and need to take care of you until you die. That's all it is. And when these Christians and evangelical Christians, the only reason they like Trump, it's because they all know they're hypocrites, because not one person can live their life by their Bible every day. It's impossible. And then they like Donald Trump, and this is the one thing that why Donald Trump got a lot of respect. He does not make excuses for who he is. He show it, he say it, he doesn't change it. You know, like how some of our black people is, the ones that we say that's ignorant, because they say it from their heart. They the same yesterday, today and tomorrow, and they don't say, hey, don't say that they're listening. That's why Donald Trump got so much so much uh, power, because he says what he says. He, he stands on it. He doesn't change it. The only thing, if Donald Trump was smart, he should have came out and said, yeah, I pay for some cat, and some of your husbands do too. And if I choose to do it again, that's my business. Now, is it wrong because I didn't pay taxes on it, or is it because I did not did deny it? Because the real reason a lot of men is getting caught is because they're paying for something and they're changing their routine. And if you're out there being stupid, you deserve to get caught. That's why women are so good at it. They don't change the routine. They don't come home smelling like soap. 
They don't sit there and say, I need to go to the doctor because they didn't because that juice box got empty and now they can't perform. It's because they're doing things the wrong way. So that I'm just giving it to you in a nutshell. And if they've been out all been out all day with another woman, they ain't gonna be able to bust no dust with their wife anyway. So she's gonna so he's he's telling on himself anyway. So I just wanted to share that with y'all. Trump always gonna have his his, his followers. Because he say what he say and he stand on what he say. And if some black people will say what they say and stand on what they say and stop worrying about what people think, y'all might have a little more respect and resources than you'd be surprised. Have a good one. Thank you, Al. Um, all right. So, counterpoint. If Barack Obama said to a media publication that he couldn't stand Michelle for 10 years of their marriage, God would hate his guts. You'd never forgive him. You would destroy him. How dare you be disrespectful to your wife, Barack? How dare you say that about a strong black woman, Barack? But she is able to say it and get support for saying it. Like, that's what I was trying to bring up. Because I assure you, Barack couldn't stand Michelle ass either for 10 years. But he didn't run to the media and tell it. He told her. Uh, Michelle, you know what? I can't stand you. I would divorce you, but I need you to run for president. I need you. She went to the media. That's the problem that I have. I'm not trying to tell her what she can and cannot say. I. It's not like, because they knew there was tension in the marriage. A man knows immediately. He knew for 10 years someone, right? But he ain't going to Revolt TV. I'm like, y'all ain't going to believe this, but for 10 years, I couldn't stand her black ass. I really couldn't stand. He wouldn't dare. That's what I'm saying. He, If they had issues, Barack Obama likely took it up with her. Instead of going to, you don't do that. Because then we look at him sideways now. I don't even want to talk to the caller again. How many times you going, how many text messages you going to send? How many times you going to call, man? Man, this is this is Truth Nation, man, and 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 you you always say you value our our opinions and and our thought oh, process. Hold on, man. Only a, only process, a couple of opinions, not cheating. all of them. Just a few. Do you opinions. think these maniac? Just first, I, I got a question, then I'll make my comment. Do you think these maniac MAGA Republicans have not talked to every high school classmate, every woman who went to Harvard, every woman Barack ever met? And not one of them so far has came to the public and collected her millions of dollars from TMZ for saying she cheated with him. Because so, some women, are, you got to understand, brother, some women are cool. Some women. Shout out to every woman. Okay, so with that said, I'll accept that as your response. And that is, uh, that is officially my response. Are, there are some women that don't want to ruin met. Barack Obama's reputation out of yes. their own selfishness. Yes. So we're going to believe if we're going with your comment that every woman he ever met is financially secure enough that TMZ can't pay them to lie. Cause you know, I mean, even if you lied about it, people today would believe the it. Call, right? How on earth would people even know who Barack Obama was involved with in like the early and mid eighties, way before there was any internet and social media, the, they the, wouldn't the know. FBI who just raided Diddy's house, spoke to every woman Barack Obama ever met from the time he was in high school while no. he was running for president. No. Or, or very many of them. I'm quite and sure. And even if they did, the FBI... Hold on, man. Was. Chill out. Oh, yeah. And even if oh. the FBI did talk to Barack Obama, his sexual proclivities wouldn't be fodder for the media. That would be a part of a sealed file. You think the FBI goes and interviews people and then gives that stuff to TMZ? Come on, bro. You got to know better than that. Even if it never happened, there are, there, there are a lot of people who hate him enough that they would lie about it, right? Barack Obama probably was smart enough to not sleep with women that ultimately would hate him. There and turn you on him. go. There you go. They just, well, you got to keep in well, mind that again, he probably so has I'm slept just, with I women. Just they just did. Do you know those. that women are quiet about who they sleep with? You realize that, right? That they don't sometimes, even if they slept with Barack Obama, some women shut up about it and they so, just keep so that memory to know themselves. All these young women that are on TikTok every day at the club cheating. They don't care. I, I I think maybe you're speaking of older women. Correct. Barack Obama's women, older. Women I'm speaking are, about women in his generation. Why? Why? What What was so difficult to comprehend that women that Barack Obama... And here's the other thing. Michelle Obama didn't lose her virginity to Barack. 
all the men that Michelle may have slept with are cool. They didn't, they didn't say nothing because it ain't nobody's business. You know what kind of status that is? When you can walk around here and say you bagged the first lady, you don't need to tell nobody. Man, that's confidence. Just like the men that may have slept with Hillary Clinton. They have, they have that memory to fall back on. You don't need to say nothing. I think y'all have just been so, I don't know, indoctrinated by social media. that we And because Donald Trump is an idiot. Look at the women he slept with. The women that he slept with thrived on the notoriety and fame from sleeping with him. That's why they did it. Did nobody sleep with Donald Trump when he was broke? Donald Trump had to get money to get some hoo-ha. Then, right, and then the women that he chose, women that he paid, women he had transactional relations with, wanted to capitalize off of the fame that they would get by sleeping with Donald Trump. Barack Obama, when he back in the day, he was broke. Ain't no woman bragging about humping a broke dude. And then when he became president, they're just like, oh, that's nice. I feel a part of his presidency. Why are we discussing this? The MAGA world and white evangelicals are tied together by many ultra-conservative beliefs, including attitudes about family and gender that makes them outliers in American society. Black, Hispanic, and Asian evangelicals are more conservative than their non-evangelical counterparts, but not as blindly right-wing or pro-Trump like white evangelicals. More than half at 56% of white evangelicals and a third at 34% of all Americans say that society is better off if people make it a priority to get married and have children. Only 27% of white evangelicals believe that abortion should be legal in all or most cases, a position held by 65% of other Americans. 61% of white evangelicals, but just 42% of all Americans, believe that society has become, quote, too soft and feminine. White evangelicals are the only religious group in which a majority at 74% favor banning the discussion of sexual orientation and or gender identity in public schools. Between the years 2021 and 2023, a share of QAnon believers in American society increasingly increased significantly from 14% to 23% of all Americans. Even 14% of Democrats now embrace this crazy conspiracy theory, along with twice as many, 29% of Republicans. More white evangelicals at 30% embrace QAnon than members of any other group. White evangelicals' disdain for science has reflected in their views on global warming. While a significant majority of 61% of Americans believe that climate change is caused by human activity. I'm going to leave it there. Have a great day. I'll see you next time. 1017 The Truth and Associated Bank have teamed up for our Black-Owned Business Give Back. Each quarter, we'll be giving away $6,000 worth of free commercial advertising for three months 